man who first makes this daring flight. But in a very real sense, it will not be one man going to the moon. It will be an entire nation. What's up, compartment, man? Hey, you know you're the third person who's given me this today. I need to hear Zeppelin for the first time. Case in London is the top <laughs> vote getter. And worship with the feet of a wrestling god. Not gonna City fireman carry takeovers here. Hello. Missed the home run because of the throw. -up. So, and I've seen a bunch of them, but that's the best one. On Layfield, we'll move on to round two. It's Now, how do you like them apples? 40,000 players have stepped up. You don't have three times that. Pete Babcock has moved on to round number two. Gets away from Goldberg. Even if I argued them, they would be 50 50. Officially in round number two is Marcus Buff Bagwell. <laughs> Very 26 big ones. Series at that time, and they didn't even do it for all of the game. It's a conversation about SMU's fall from grace. Oh. Having something behind it. There's two guys standing there, and zip. As long as there's expertise. Talk a little bit to me, Steamboat. They send him out to Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Future science officer for the Enterprise. Fred Altman have moved on to round number two officially. I'm going to have a few words with him. So good to see you. I don't want to be a role model, but if I have to be, okay. Professional soccer teams across America are... Steven Tobolowski barely ekes out a win against Todd Bridges. Better. His name was Herb Moe. But it wasn't a million newspapers. Eddie Johnson and Jumping Jim Brunzel have moved on in advance to round two. Never trust a big butt when it smiles. For the ones we saw in front of the castle. I am Ted of San Dimas. I don't understand what Wichita has to do with a snowstorm. The woman who played my mother in Amityville Part 2 is also Latin. She's coming hard with that boy. <laughs> Tommy Davidson is officially in the second round. Diane Franklin has also moved on. Dignified is the word often associated with Lenny. And it was me that called your number. And he's going to move on. So therefore, I think this speech is so impactful. Stay here while I go talk to him. My daughter is too good for you. It's just going to get out of control. Jeremy, uh, London has the rebuttal. My voice should be heard. Because the way you're looking at me, we must be old friends. That's terrific. She was a politician. But inwardly, you could have a different feeling. Swain. Alexander Knox. To the left, Army! Look at her! My middle name was Kashmir. William Wyler of the AFI Life Achievement Award. The the Gulf of Tonkin did not happen. For all intents and purposes, any historian will tell you that's what started the war. It would never happen. And the human life on both sides. It was not respected on both sides.
every athlete, they would love this show. How do we get all of the academics, the athletes to watch? There is nothing that was on TV tonight that even remotely rivals what we did on this broadcast. I never understood, but not until you came along. Have you ever had an affair with your roommate? People don't know that Ray Lewis was on Dancing with the Stars. Being a Minnesota native, I'm almost betraying Minnesota Vikings. Come, you didn't pack enough underwear. Well, girl, you made such a convincing case. I was much taller and much bigger. What you doing, right? Another in the height. Dan Moria and Mariel Hemingway oh. both move on to round number two. And this is my good buddy Fonz. Hey, hey. I guess I'm the only one he didn't invite. It's thicker than water and thicker than your blood. My money. <laughs> Adoption is a very important, you know. It's not so much about all of his music. A very sick boy. He was a young boy, he got a guitar. He became a prisoner of his own fame. The script is 450 pages long. This is Michael. The director of photography he actually created the shot. Talk. There's a flip side to that coin. It's about the numbers. Because I can control this sport with one move. DDT. DDT. Tremendous countdown. How precious gift of life is. I became the man my mom prayed for all those years. You have to be careful when you fall in love. There are things that will come out in us. I've had the greatest life out of everybody. 170 films. And the American dream lives on in Minnesota. Standardized tests, these are his grades. Are you listening to me? I'm going to learn how to game this system. This film needs to come back. Bruce Davison and Mark Met is Jesse Ventura, who also moves to round number two. Got to keep my cool. Paleontologist. Brian Nobbs grabs a chair, slams it across. It's me on such a gut level. Throw in Donnie's ashes and they blow back in his face. He learned from Muddy Waters. Tanya said she voted for Peter. Okay, I now appreciate that. With 34 points, Jerry Sags will move on officially to round number two of the game. Brian Nobbs moves on to round number two. I guarantee I'll kill anybody who does. John Wayne said, I don't give jobs, I hire men. People's minds, you know, things inside you mature. Refreshments. Dip doesn't grow on trees, you know. <laughs> the body of the doll. This is the world's greatest film. The way it sets up the anticipation. Jeff's loss of everything. So Tretch, Don yeah. Most, and Tom Holland will all be moving to round number two. Morrison may be going. Morrison is going. He is fouled by Hudson. You know me, Gene. These are titanium steel. Playing today for all of the retired players. Come over the rail. If they move, see the free hostage. Is Mr. Spencer Haywood. Mr. Brutus Beefcake will also move on to. For you, I said, baby, I should. There's that head to head matchup, and he clearly. basketball could help me cope with that. The world is so polarized more than ever. But now you're my hero in life. 
more old folks that want it fast and right now too i may not agree i may agree complex things are even becoming even more complex three men are gonna be part of round two of what you see is what you get from me we 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 take it one step at a time that's yeah i'm trying to win this entire thing it's like in sports, I'm sure Jim would say the same thing. You don't play for individual awards. Play. Well, yeah, I'd love to be able to say I, I beat all these guys in the debate. It's about the pride and the pride. Prize is pretty darn good, too. <laughs> it's the pride. It's always about the pride. Hey, I've come here to chew gum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubble gum, brother. At the end of the day, it really is about winning. Yeah, I can't, I'm here to win. It. My, it's in my DNA. And I'm waiting to kick. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. I'm, I'm here to do my best. Yeah, of course it is. I mean, you know, everybody everybody has some pride. Victory has a thousand fathers, but defeat is an orphan. I plan on winning tonight. She's in here doing mental push-ups. You know, winning is really important. But you know what's even greater is inspiring. And bro, that's what you do with this show. Well, you're in it to win it, or why be in it at all, right? I'm, I'm about winning. I, I think I'd be more interested in the prize. It's about the prize. Bobby, I am here to go for the go for the gusto. Why not? Why are you keeping score if you don't want to win it? You know? <laughs> Though I'm not super competitive, I would like to win this. We all want to win, right? I'm here to win. I, you know, I'll do the best I can and leave it up to the voters. Of course, I'd love to win. I'm always in it to win it, Obi. I'm definitely in it to win it. I've already won because I know I'm sure I'm going to be enlightened by, by our other guests. I hate losing. I want to go to Greece. It's about the pride. You don't want to come in second. You want to be first. Do you here to win the whole thing? Oh, sure. Why not? Well, of course I am. I don't do nothing to lose. Uh, yes, I do. Of course I do. I want to go to Greece. Miss Stiff, are you here to win the entire thing? I have a newborn daughter, so I'm here to win it for her. Let's go. Oh, are you kidding me? I wouldn't be on here if I wasn't going to win something. Yes, I'm going to win it all, man. Win it at all, baby. You know, send some kids to Greece. Oh, definitely. If I do, if I'm lucky enough to win, I'll turn it back into the pool. The money? Absolutely. I'm going for it. Party oh. people! That's right. I'm here. Nothing better than uh, the top. Well, I'm going to give it 110%. That's Hacksaw Jim Duggan, you know. Um, we don't go out on, with no losing mentality, man. So I'm here to win. Yeah! Yes, I'm here to win the whole thing, man. I don't get in the ring for losing, man. I'm like in the ring right now. Use that to kind of opportunity to do those similar things. Uh, but are you also here to win the entire tournament? All right. And have to want to win this thing. The Mauri always gets his mind. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to win. I'm coming in first place. I don't play. I just win. some fun great set the sister of mary hartman mary hartman i can't think of the character's name kathy shumway maybe yeah she was kathy shumway very kathy very shumway. good that's very yeah. impressive you got a good workshop great. you're doing True, this do, is man. what's going on yeah. in your workshop sweep the leg but you're you're sheer nine or ten you're probably nine and a half and <laughs> ten is no one's perfect but honest to god you, you're terrific you do your homework and i, I appreciate I've done that everybody I've done, in the 80s, I did Johnny Carson, I did sure. Murph Griffin, I did it all. And um, you're very energetic and good and you asked the right question. Welcome to the Celebrity Tournament, my friend! Thank you, Avi. I agree with all your previous guests. You give good intro. If I see any smirking, this class is over. Uh, another trio of questions, now more underrated. We have Billy D. Williams, Italian man named Skippy, or Unicycle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Italian men named Skippy. Put me away, Abby. That's, uh, that, that's, yeah. They sold the merchandise and merch. They put their own sequels in the movie ahead in of time. In the movie. You're bleeding, man. I ain't got time to bleed. Abolish the political parties. Last name Ventura, first name Jesse. I'll tell you this, Abby, you, you definitely do your homework. Hey, I, I, like I said, uh, the good thing about you, you do your freaking homework. You're extremely prepared, much more prepared than most interviewers that I get. Uh, uh, Looks like he's having a heart attack. I don't need no doctor. It's just my back. Oh, where'd you get that book from? Yeah, there we go. It's my earful, but yeah. maybe. You guys, I say a lot. You did your homework. Uh, sir, could you have fun here in the green room? Anytime you want me back, I'm here, brother. Yeah, well, I'm going to have to work out understanding with the law at some other time, Florida. John Amos. 
Man, what an introduction. I hope I can live up to that. I God bless you. <laughs> I'm prepared to uh, take on this challenge of this wonderful, wonderful monologue that you've written. And I couldn't think of anything I'd rather do after I read it again for maybe the third or fourth time. I wish that I'd had the time to commit it to memory because it deserves that. Giving me your thoughts and your input because as I told you, that piece that you sent me is... Ooh, it, I love good writing. Last name Darso, first name Barry. Holy cow, what an intro that was. I couldn't say it better than myself. Unbelievable, thank you. Bill, welcome to the Celebrity Grand Debate Tournament, my friend. Thank you, my friend. What an introduction, I'll tell you. It's amazing. Ray Mercer, welcome to the Celebrity Tournament my friend. Hey, man, it's a pleasure being here, man. It's an honor. Right, well, welcome to my friend. Man. Whoa, dude. Yo, if I ever need to find somebody, just in general, I am calling you. That was incredible. Mr. Spencer Haywood, welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that great introduction. This is awesome. Welcome, DC Glenn, to the Celebrity Tournament, my friend. Yeah. This is how I feel about your introduction. Brickle! Let's go. Get it. Jeff Timmons, welcome, my friend. Avi, thank you, man. That is quite the introduction. I, I, like all the other previous guests, I can't say that I've ever, I've done a ton of these things, as you know. I've never had an intro like that. Kudos to you, man. It's an honor to be with you. Thanks for having me. I totally appreciate it. Welcome, Jacques Rougeau. <laughs> very, very, very good. I don't know what to say, to be honest with you. I think you should write my own book, like the intro. Would you do that again? Tim Hardaway, welcome, my friend. Thank you, thank you, man. That was great. I love the introduction. Yeah, you go with me anywhere and introduce <laughs> me anywhere. I love that. I appreciate that. Thank that. That was the best introduction I ever had in my life, my career. I think that you've done a fabulous job, and I have not met an interviewer like you. You know, nor neither have I had some of these questions that really sort of went very deep into my heart. Did you have a lot of fun today, Raven? Yeah, I did. I really surprisingly did. I thought it was a really good time. It's about education and entertainment. Again, did you have a nice time? I did. I enjoyed it immensely, and it, it got me really got me thinking. And I really got a chance to meet a couple of fantastic guys. <laughs> now, that's up to you. I could have stayed on for hours more. I love different topics. You know, you letting us speak and just reaching other things we never ever spoke about. Ryan, really quickly, you had a good time, my friend? Dude, absolutely. Oh my God, this was beyond expectations. Yes, I sir. love you. This is amazing. Uh, uh, Spencer, did you have a good time? I had a great time. It was great. I mean, your intro for me was just awesome, but also the intro to the show was like, wow, you have all of these people. The only two people I want to beat right now is Rick Barry <laughs> and Eddie Johnson. Maybe I'm coming for you. Really good discussion and and the respect. You know, you're at the center of it all, and you really uh, are terrific at this. I've never done anything remotely like this. And uh, overall, had a nice time, my friend. Oh, I had a blast, man. This was absolutely phenomenal. So keep up the good work. I said I hope this takes off even bigger and better than well, it is right now with you. Uh, Tim, overall, did you have a good time, my friend? Man, this was incredible. This is different. What well, I don't even know where you come up with these questions. I want <laughs> you so innovative. I, I, I love it, man, because it got it got me thinking. Man, this is beautiful. This is you doing Thank a great you. job. When you got a hangover, you, you can have some of these. I've had a 32 year hangover watching the Knicks. <laughs> did, did you have a good time tonight, my friend? You have something amazing going with the show because, but you're there and you're educating us. You're taking people from different eras, different disciplines. If you're taking us out of our comfort zone, you're making us fall in love with people that we didn't know. No one will ever ad lib like you. It is amazing, though, that everyone that comes on, they always say the same thing. Uh, how did you do that? How did how did you know all of that? That is just simply amazing. Oh, that, that was one of the best oh. introductions I've ever had in my entire life. Not uh. a, it was better than my bar mitzvah. Have that bad dream again. Did you find the technique itself helpful when it came to observing your scene partner staying present instead of strictly relying upon memory? That's a great question, Avi. Ralph Cramden, the yoga instructor, or Don Corleone, the computer repair person? <laughs> <laughs> Here, but I really, I really enjoyed this, man. You're, you're a smart guy, and you ask really good questions. And Ed Begley, welcome, my friend, to the green room again. Thank you so much, Avi. Good to be back. Last name Antania, first name Joe. Joe, welcome, my friend. <laughs> I think I have whiplash, Avi. Thank you no. very much. Jim, Jim Duggan, welcome, my friend. Well, thank you very much. Oh! Oh, that most welcome, my friend. <laughs> thank you, Avi. What, a, what an introduction. That, that was very impressive. The one and only Tretch. Yo, that was dope. I appreciate you better than a lot of these rappers out there. I'm Holland. Welcome, my friend. Avi, I stand in awe. 
of your memory and your ability to rhyme, and it's just amazing. What an incredible introduction, Avi. That is probably the best introduction I've probably ever had. Hey, DiBiase, welcome to the TCAN Celebrity Grand Debate Tournament, my friend. Brother, I want to take you with me everywhere to get an introduction. <laughs> That's the best introduction I've ever had in my life. Great. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed myself. This, and it's so positive. Mark, welcome to the TCAN Celebrity <laughs> Grand Tournament, my friend. Think positive. Oh, my God. Gosh, Avi, man, I feel like I just ran a marathon listening to that, man. <laughs> Come on. Welcome to the TCAN Celebrity Tournament, my friend. Every day's a Friday and every night's a Saturday night in Nastyville. And I am so happy to be on this show. Christopher Martin, welcome, my friend. Incredible. Uh, so I hope you didn't mind it. I filmed that intro you just did for me because I'm going to play that on my low self-esteem day. Jake Roberts, welcome to the TCAN Celebrity Grand Tournament, my friend. Wow, that was scary. Welcome, Brutus. Ben, I love this. This is great. You got the intro down to a science, baby. Peter Melman, welcome, my friend. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Bruce Davison, welcome to the turn of my friend. That was, that was great, man. Where did you dig that all up? That's amazing. Uh, Jesse Ventura, welcome to the TCAN Celebrity Tournament, my friend. Thank you, Avi. It's great to be here and great to be back interviewed by you. It's been far too long. Never been out with a girl before. You made, you made me laugh, too. It was great. Yeah, I, th I think Alf would be wisecracking while the alien would be tearing everybody up apart, I guess. Like, uh, Let's talk about... Some, I guess, some of the 80s horror classics. Last name Wilkins, first name Lenny. Lenny Wilkins, my friend, welcome. <laughs> Thank you, man. And all of the, the actors and directors, different worlds come together. This is like a sanctuary for those people because we don't always get to talk about the things that really, truly move us. I, I love this show because it makes me feel. Dolly Kirkland, welcome to the green room. How did you do that thing where you were talking so fast? I don't know. I, I, very few people can do what you did. Well, um, the acting teacher here, 35 years, commends you on your ability to do that i'm very impressed because i've done podcasts in the past and oh so what have you done and what are you going to be doing later this is fantastic i mean this gets your juices oh, thank you. you know it gets you thinking thank you they had fun, you know, it's fun and it is educational, so. I had a good time. It was intellectually stimulating, which is kind of a, a unique thing in, in this world of ours today. I want to compliment you on giving me my best introduction I've ever had in my whole life, too. That's uh, the first thing. Thank you. Did you have fun tonight, my friend? Yes, I did. Yes. Looking, uh, looking for- Being around ahead. people are willing and open. I like that. I, I did have a good time. It was a lot, a lot different than what I thought it was going to be, and I really enjoyed it. I appreciate you, and I appreciate the opportunity. It was uh, exhilarating. Like Barry, I didn't know what to expect. We done. I enjoyed it. You bring in people from different walks of life. It's good to be able to to see that you bring people together that, you know what, maybe one of the world's problems will get solved by listening to the show. And I want you to accept the accolades that you get from all of these brilliant people. They tell you that you're smart. They tell you that you're exposed. These are comments and compliments that you have to say, thank you very much, I accept. My name is Sergeant Slaughter. Wasn't sure what to expect. You're uh, number one in my book as far as putting on a podcast, knowing what, what you know. You know, I just think it was really good company and uh, you're terrific and I I've never done something like this before so it was fun no you know what you you're a very interesting person with all this rhyming stuff you must really put a lot of effort into this I would love to read or see something that you've written Thank you. because I'm sure it's uh, really interesting you're reading the why sauerkraut Henry Kissinger's deep soothing voice or dogs wearing sweaters I like dogs wearing sweaters your jack of all trades is teaching this craft as rewarding for you as performing it I think sometimes it's more rewarding. Where did you, man, you do your research. I'm very impressed. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. You do a great job preparing. A very simple formula. Everybody's a suspect. I hope you're getting paid a lot. <laughs> that was the greatest <laughs> intro I think I've ever had. The amount of stuff that you talked to me about that I don't even remember about myself is so impressive that I'm highly impressed. So I would Thank give you, this man. a very high A. Oh, I did. It was like a high school reunion. Yeah, no, it's terrific and it's fun. And, and keep bringing diverse personalities together. I think that's great. And it's also wonderful to hear people talk sanely to each other today. Eric, how are you, my friend? What's up, Vic? How you doing, man? I like that introduction. Golly, I didn't know that stuff about myself. <laughs> this is, I oh. mean, this, I think, my top, I think, because when you did the intro you gave me, I kind of give it to you. I like well, you it. deserve it. Later on, you were able to get her cast on a series, and she received her SAG card. Is that right? Oh, I love 
love you that you brought that up. I can't tell you how refreshing it is that somebody knows what they're doing. Well, what an honor to meet you. And oh, Tommy, my you're pleasure. great. Oh, I enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Courtney, uh, did you have a lot of fun too as well? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I, thank God I had, you know, a sports topic. Did you guys have fun? I had a blast. This is a great show. What a blast. Yeah. We, I had a great time uh, tonight. Did you keep rhyming, man? Entertaining. And like I said, it gave like a battle rap spoken word. <laughs> you know, usually I'll do interviews and get asked the same questions about Stephen King. This was great to talk about things that matter that go beyond projects. Last name Johnson, first name Ed wow! Oh, when I have a retirement party, even at my funeral, you better show up. <laughs> Papa Smurf as a hip hop artist. Yo, <laughs> yeah, you're a very talented. That's amazing, Mr. Sizemore. First name Tom. How are you, my friend? So I could turn the volume lower if you'd like next time. If you'd like me to do that, Tom, I could do that. I don't know what I can do now. First name Keith. Oh my God! What a great introduction. Fantastic. You do oh. your research. Connected with me right there, and he knows my brand. He nailed. I can't get. And I now I know why. This is why your audiences love you. This oh. is why you continue to great guests and great guests beget beget great guests. It's fabulous. Oh, I'm excited. How are you feeling, John? Terrific. Guys and gals and pals, here we are live yet again. And you know what, guys and gals, if you enjoyed that intro, that intro, if you're a fan of Unbridled Passion, that intro says it all, as it can melt the South Pole. This place we call the Green Room was filled with edutainment and has plenty of hardened soul. More took me under his wing. There hasn't been a second in which I abandoned this craft ever since. Its purpose I shall always sing. It's time I listen to Stanislavski and take a beat as I process everything in real time. This is the 167th consecutive episode of The Green Room, a feeling that cannot be expressed through a mere rhyme. This craft, this art, this blank canvas that we fill with our souls are reminders that passion is eternal. This heart of mine on full display I provide unto you wholeheartedly. It guides me. It is as eternal as it is external. With a bevy of views on 53 plus pages, week in and week out, innovation is our name and the sweat is the sweet. Dedication, labor, and innovation only arrive when your effort is absolute, so put that in a tweet. And in this celebrity tournament that has captivated the masses, the field is one of a kind. Guys and gals, we call it edutainment. We call it competitive camaraderie. At the end of the day, we are all the same, despite the name and the acclaim and the fame. So guys and gals, right now, let's bring in our first competitor right now, our first participant. This is going to be a lot of fun. I know all of you have been predicting who some of these luminaries are. Remember, as of tonight, 65 Hall of Famers. 65 Oscar, Emmy, Grammy, Tony and Golden Globe winners are in this tournament. It is absolutely stunning. And remember, it's not about winning and boasting. It's about learning and listening. Something that's rare today, guys and gals. That's what we do with the TKN Celebrity Tournament. Of course, 13 grand on the line and a trip for two degrees isn't so bad. Two out of three will advance tonight unless there's a three-way tie based on your votes. And remember, guys and gals and pals, winning this thing, five rounds. If you advance to round number two, there's a few months time. This is quite the field. So guys and gals, let's get started with our first participant right now. The Bart Shakespeare said, if we are true to ourselves, we cannot ever be false to anyone. And I concur. I do concur. Our first participant is a remarkable and fascinating human being with layers of depth going several orders of magnitude deep. And he shared the intimate understanding of the self with a public audience that is more than a gift. It's a miracle. He was born to parents Rosina, a typist, and Henry, a bookbinder and restorer in New York City. It doesn't take a committee to get down to the nitty gritty to appreciate the fact that he's intelligent, charming, and witty. He was raised in the suburban city of Pasadena, California from a young age. He received this training in Beckett, Shaw, and a man that I studied my entire life that reminded us that this is all a stage. He ran for school treasurer as a nine-year-old in the third grade 
His mom sacrificed a lot as she coveted. The importance of art, culture, literature, education. That is not something that we should evade, as it stands taller than any accolade. He was class valedictorian, loved the Odyssey and Les Miserables, and after graduating at the top of his class from South Pasadena High School, he attended Yale University on a full academic scholarship where he studied fine art. He's obviously smart, but he stood apart, as his storytelling is honest, like all the greats, including Humphrey Bogart. His first role was Jayquees in a production of As You Like It, followed by Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? What was their concern? The head of the theater department, Bart Teusch, pulled him aside and told him that he had a rare quality. Would he be able to learn? Indeed he did, waiting for Godot with David Hyde Pierce, filmed in West Haven for their senior project. It turned out rather well, and he looks back upon it fondly in retrospect. Following graduation, he was spotted by casting director and earned a spot in a New York production of Paul Rudnick's Poor Little Lambs, off-Broadway at St. Peter's Church in 81-82. The interest of casting directors would accrue, as many would review, and noticed his artistic growth and value, something that no one could ever misconstrue, as his work was honest and true. This led to him being cast opposite Tom Cruise in Risky Business back in 1983. What's next? Picture waiting on a director who is three hours behind. Would you be carefree or consider screaming like a banshee? Luckily, the director was Marty Brest, who is a wonderful actor's director, and this particular film happened to be Beverly Hills Cop. This film made it to the top and would be viewed globally by all nonstop. In fact, his friend suggested that he purchase the latest Newsweek at any store or shop. Times were tough, so that wasn't an easy feat, but between Sunset and Hollywood, about four or five blocks from a Ralph's grocery, there it was, an amazing review of his work that must have produced at least a smirk. I would have been elated and on other planet like Star Trek's Captain Kirk. When he went to South Africa, he found out that Nelson Mandela was a fan, which is something we'll bring up later. A couple of years later, he would take on a role that resonated with you, you, and this moderator, as he provided this character with his own bio. Such was this man an innovator. For his role, he was mentioned, guys and gals, and nominated for an Ami, Emmy, and hosted SNL 1987 on Valentine's Day, as we all were craving for an encore. He's a renaissance man and creates little buildings using architectural salvage from before the Civil War. From landscape and architectural design and drawing in his studio at home to voicing over 100 audiobooks that won him a slew of awards for his artful way of reading. He's humble, down to earth and real, which is why he's always succeeding. On stage there is Chasing Nicolette, Sly Fox and putting it together, and he loved to play Richard II. I'd see that personally would even give up a ticket to Denmark. For that matter, I do the same for the benefit of watching him in the Winter's Tale and the public theater's Shakespeare in the Park. From this one-man play fully committed in Chicago, which was Bare Bones Theater, to his amazing work on Stephen King's and Tom Holland's The Langoliers, he deserves all the roses, compliments, and certainly the cheers. From the Flamingo Kid to Martin Scorsese, The After Hours, to The Young and the Restless, Sabrina, and Step by Step, just to name a few, these were all projects that we certainly got into. Oh yeah, that series that lasted nearly a decade, which is nearly impossible for a comedy? The producers Tom Miller and Bob Boyette saw him in Beverly Hills Cop and wrote his name down on a parking ticket as a possibility for the lead role in a new series called Perfect Strangers, playing the iconic Balky. I could see you all going, whoa, how apropos. They're dancing in joy from Mexico to Chicago. Aren't you glad it isn't tomorrow? Of course, it's tonight. So welcome a kind, positive, magnificent human being. First name, Bronson. Last name, Pinchot. Welcome, Bronson Pinchot, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. Can I uh, can I compliment you on something? Sure, thank you. <laughs> uh, all the time that we talked, you were the best person of a, a guy introvert that I have ever seen. <laughs> thank you. From from a big old extra, I I uh, I commend you for that. That's that's some of the best. <laughs> oh, thank you, my friend. I meant every word of it because you are one hell of a human being, and you are so down to earth and humble. And I loved uh, being able to get to know you a bit. And tonight, guys and gals, Bronson Pinchot will be part of an incredible lineup where we bring conversation living room style about things that are positive. We learn. We have fun as well. Mr. Pinchot, I want to put you backstage momentarily and bring in our other two guests. All righty. Thank you, Mr. Pinchot, guys and gals. Give Mr. Pinchot a hand. Guys and gals and pals, uh, this is one hell of a conversation we are going to have. There is no doubt about that. Uh, we have two more participants coming in here again for this amazing, amazing segment. Discipline is the refining fire by which talent becomes ability. Aristotle said it is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. That rings true, oh so true, when it comes to our next participant. 
He was born and grew up in Middletown, Ohio, a community back then of 42,000, about 28 miles north of Cincinnati. His father, Mark, was a pressman in a paper mill, and his mother, Jean, worked in an assembly line in a box factory. Before he started first grade, he already knew third grade arithmetic thanks to his mom and dad. His ambition level was second to none even as a young lad. As a child, he would challenge himself often and had developed alphabetizing systems and memory games. Through consistency, passion, dedication, and work ethic, he would become one of the all-time biggest names. From the fifth grade on, in more than 125 games in elementary school, junior high school, and high school, his fans never shed a tear, nor did they sit in fear, but rather they would cheer, as he'd always kick it into high gear. An example? Sure. He participated only once in a losing effort, and that was a one-point loss in the last game of his high school career. As a sophomore at Middletown High School at a state tournament, he scored 53 and 44 points back-to-back. That is a lot for any sports fan to take in and truly unpack. Wow. As a young basketball player, 12 to 15 hours a day, guys and gals, is how hard he worked and no one knew about his talent and skill. But his Roosevelt Junior High School games were played at 3.30 p.m. on Thursdays. And since most parents worked, not many were there to kick back and chill and experience the thrill. But once he reached high school and winning streak started, things exploded in Middletown like Carnival in Brazil. Had a great high school coach in Paul Walker. In his career under Walker at Middletown, he would do things that even logic would defy. He scored 2,460 points, breaking the record set by Will Chamberlain at Philadelphia's Overbrook High. He led Middletown to back-to-back state championships in 56 and a 76-game winning streak. There was an air of mystique, but there's no doubt that it was a combination of mental focus, physique, meeting technique, and a Hall of Fame work ethic. And to, well, to think about it, he hadn't yet peaked. By senior year, he was also president of his class and an honor student. Some 150 colleges from Hawaii to NYU were after him, even though some of their tactics weren't quite prudent. There had been offers to pay off the mortgage of the family's modest seven-room home. Ohio State University is where he'd go as he'd earn an academic scholarship, all the while conquering opponents on the court like ancient Rome. James R. McCoy, dean of the College of Commerce and Administration, calls his academic performance truly outstanding. Being one of the greatest on the court was just a part of it as his horizons were expanding. In spite of the rigorous demands of his sport, Lucas carried, guys and gals, more hours of classes than average OSU graduating student, and that number would be 17. This goes beyond the routine, as his excellence was pristine, since unseen. At Ohio State, he played on the Buckeyes' 1960 National Championship team. That summer, he was the youngest member of the 1960 U.S. Olympic basketball team. They won gold and are still considered one of the greatest Olympic teams in NBA history. Watching them play would have been quite the dream. In 1973, he completed the career championship sweep. As a member of the NBA's New York Knicks, less than a handful have accomplished this amazing feat. Championships in high school, college, Olympics, and the pros, this man was allergic to defeat. He was the NBA's Rookie of the Year and was named to seven NBA All-Star teams, and in 65 was the MVP. His fans were always in glee, screaming like a frightened banshee, as he was always the key to any of his franchises avoiding mediocrity. During his 11-year NBA career, he scored 14,053 points, and his 12,942 rebounds ranked fourth in league history when he retired. Beyond the game, his legend continued through education as he'd innovate and leave many inspired. He's published more than 30 books on the subject of improving memory, including the memory book, Ready, Set, Remember, and Remember the Word. His yearning to help students was unconditional, and he was never deterred. He was devoted. He has devoted his life to cultivating ideas and methods for fun and easy memory retention. The resulting methods have earned him the title of Dr. Memory as he's captivated us and held our attention through his comprehension and invention, which is, guys and gals, has more than one dimension. He once recalled and recited 200 pages of names in the Manhattan phone book. He's also a classy human being, and I quite enjoyed his outlook. He remains the only basketball player in collegiate history to lead the nation in field goal percentage and rebounding for three years, thus becoming the only three-time recipient of the Big Ten Player of the Year award. This achievement still has not been duplicated or surpassed, absorbing his stories, truly a reward. Named one of the 50 greatest NBA players of all time in 97, and the moment he became eligible, he was a first ballot Hall of Famer. He reminds us that in life, we can all strive for the best. There's no need for a disclaimer. One of the greatest players and teachers of all time, many travel to marvel at his excellence, whether it was via plane, train, car, or ferry. So put your hands together for a brilliant man and a one-of-a-kind man. Last name, Lucas. First name, Jerry. Jerry Lucas, welcome, my friend. Thank you, Avi, so very much. I appreciate what you said. Obviously, I was fortunate to have a great basketball career, but the most important thing you said was that education has been the most important thing in my life. It continues to be the most important thing in my life, and I strive to make a difference every day to help people with education. Yes, you do, and you do it in such an innovative way. And guys, in this segment and even after, we're going to talk more about Mr. Lucas's innovative ways. Thank you for joining us, my friend. I will put you backstage momentarily. Thank you, Avi. I'm looking forward to it. Likewise, sir. And guys and gals, our third participant right now, about to bring him in, 
If you compete, guys, with others, you might become bitter. But if you compete with yourself, you become better. True competition is procrastination, ego. It's not a race against anyone else. Rather, the real journey is only against yourself and your unrealized potential. You have no idea what you're capable of until you test your limits. Our third participant is one of those inspirational human beings on this planet. As the ob obstacles, excuse me, began appearing before him, he simply became stronger and stronger and stronger, externally and internally. He was born and raised in the Bensonhurst section of Brooklyn and dealt with adversity almost from the womb. But don't assume that it was doom and gloom. He persevered and didn't give in to negativity or frustration. Soon after he was born, he suffered a series of ear infections and lost 75% of his hearing. One could only imagine the sense of isolation. His condition wasn't diagnosed until he was three, but this setback wasn't his ultimate fate. He imagined becoming big and strong and turned to comic book heroes that he wished to emulate. His parents, Victoria and Maddie, a police lieutenant, couldn't afford two hearing aids, so he wore one hearing aid that would switch ears every six months until he was about 22 years of age. This would not deter him from bodybuilding, which began at age 12 as soon as the world would be his stage. Times were tough, so he did a lot of chin-ups and makeshift weights. You do whatever you can and forge ahead, even when going through dire straits. He went on to the elite Brooklyn Technical High School and was also a sheet metal journeyman for Local 28 at New York Sheet Metal. Life would soon accelerate as he put the pedal to the metal, and he is a man that won't allow his ambition to settle. His first competition was the Mr. New Jersey Open Hercules competition, and he took first place in the Eastern Teen Mr. America back in 1971. Soon he would compete and defeat the very best as he was truly second to none. His grandmother, Antoinette, and his grandfather, Louis, always believed in him every step of the way. Despite going twice a week to the New York Academy for the hard of hearing to learn how to read lips, he was well on his way to becoming a mainstay, as his life is like an epic and inspiring screenplay. When he met the legendary Joe Weider, Joe said you will be the next star of bodybuilding, there is no doubt. This man had resiliency and would never burn out, even as the pressure would mount and others around him would shout. When he began competing in the IFBB, he was surrounded by the very best, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Dave Draper, and Frank Zane, just to name a few. But it became apparent he would, when he would debut that he would revolutionize the sport as his reputation grew and grew. A Guinness Book record that stands to this day? How about being only 21 years of age when he won his first Mr. Universe title? And more incredibly, he remains the only person to win it again the following year at age 22. It was apparent that in his sport, he had no flaw. Let's read some numbers here, which are jaw-dropping and sure to leave one in awe. He used to bench 560 pounds. 900 pounds was his best deadlift. Career best squat, 640 pounds. 1973 IFBB Mr. America overall winner. 1973 IFBB Mr. Universe tall first overall winner. 1974 IFBB Mr. International. 1974 IFBB Mr. Universe tall first overall winner. And this from a man that as a child couldn't be any thinner. If that isn't enough, how about another career in which he would thrive? Richard Keel was set to appear in a pilot, but wasn't quite right. So who would the studio test drive? A casting agent called this man and told him to audition. It took him all of 15 minutes to get cast as the co-star. Through training, discipline, and passion, whether it was Hollywood or the stage, he was on everyone's radar. He was also transitioned his storytelling talents to the stage as a serious theatrical performer with starring roles Arsenic and Old Lace and Wrecking for Heavyweight. He's trained Mickey Rourke, Michael Jackson, and Chuck Norris, helping them excel in the gym and be great. From documentaries, books, to Of Mice and Men, there is nothing this is a true Renaissance man. Oh yeah, that iconic show I was referring to? Will I reveal the name? Sure, that's the plan. Does it get any bigger than the original ratings giant and globally successful franchise known as the Incredible Hulk? I will bid these rhymes adieu and bring in this legend, so no, no need to sulk. Sit back and enjoy the view and scream Yahoo. They know his name in Brooklyn from everywhere and every avenue to the country of Peru. Greatness is here again tonight. Is it deja vu? Put your hands together for a positive, uplifting human being. Last name Ferrigno, first name Lou. Lou, welcome, my friend. Thank you. That's the best introduction I've ever heard in my life. You know something? You need to quit the show and be my moderator and travel with me because <laughs> I will pay you a fortune. I take it. I've never been so impressed. The best introduction. Thank you. The oh. pleasure to be on your show. Thank you. Thank you, my sir, my good friend. Uh, Lou, I, I would ask Jerry and Bronson when they come here as well. A lot of luminaries in this tournament. We have the studio watching. We have the sponsor. Are you here to win the entire tournament? Do the best I can. You know, every time I compete, I compete against myself. We got great competitors. Do the best I can. Looking forward to it. I love it. Mr. Jerry Lucas will join us. Mr. Bronson Pincher will join us. Uh, Mr. Lucas and Pincher, would you guys concur? It'd be a nice thing to win the whole uh, the whole tournament. Yeah, I I, I want to try to win, but I don't think I can lift as much weight as Lou has. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, we're going to learn a lot about these fine gentlemen because that's what they are. We're going to start with topic number one and get right into it. 
And we're going to have plenty of time to get the, these three topics, guys. Not a problem. Uh, what we're going to do right now is start with topic number one, which is about education. Guys, I'll give you a quick, quick snippet of a monologue. The birth of cinema occurred when two brothers brought moving pictures on a projector and amazed fine audience with a simple shot of approaching train. What began as leisure activity in the 19th century evolved into a platform for depicting thought-provoking stories. Guys, when you focus on the notion of cinema and of education, there's going to be participants here that aim to bring you an exclusive list of an educational movie, documentary, or series that need to be on your watch list. One of these participants will educate us on innovative ways to teach students. Mr. Pinchot will begin whenever he's ready, guys. Uh, well, he'll let us know which film or documentary he selected as an educational film that has educated him on a subject that has interested him greatly. Mr. Pinchot, are you ready to go good, sir? Yes. Uh, Where's yours? When I was uh, at the university, I took a class in the Holocaust because I wanted to get it right from the horse's mouth. I had gotten it from my mother who, who lived through World War II. But anyway, they showed a film by Alain René called Night and Fog, which is the most clear-eyed, subtle, reticent pre presentation of what the death camp experience was in World War II that you could imagine. And every once in a while, I'll encounter a young person who starts um, making noises about Holocaust denial. And I don't argue with them. I just say, if you would just please watch this film and then I'll have any conversation you want. But the, the thing that's brilliant about this movie, I just reread about it because I haven't seen it in 40 years and I wanted to read, read something about it. I can't believe it's only 32 minutes long. I thought it was three hours long. It had such an impact. The most, the, the style of the, of the storytelling is so, is so restrained, but I still remember 40 years later, there's this shot, uh, a documentary shot of a pile of hair that they shaved off the women, uh, the women that they brought to these camps. And it must be 10 or 15 feet high. And there's just a voice that says only one sentence, women's hair. It's not a long description. It doesn't talk about how sharp the scissors were or how dull they were or how scared they were or anything. It just is a slow shot of all this hair. And then you hear what it is if you didn't, if you didn't know, because you can't conceive of it. It was so powerful. I didn't, I didn't do anything for three days, but the important thing about this is that it doesn't shove anything down your throat. It, it, it's maybe there's 12 lines in the whole thing. It's just images. It's just, oh God, it's the most, it's the most eloquent thing I've ever seen. I never want to see it again as long as I live because it took me so long to, to get over it, but I want everybody to see it. Whoever says anything flippant about anybody's suffering or any act of war or anything, anybody that, that has not uh, lived through it, lives through anything that picks up a placard and marches and says anything about anybody's uh, misfortunes should see that film and then rethink it's just a, it's just an amazing piece of non intrusive uh, it's just like a parent telling you as a child the, the essence of something and it, it's profound i i thought it was hours long it's 32 minutes long so anyone can watch it if you have the the soul to to endure it it was a great great learning tool Thank you so much, Mr. Pinchot. Yeah, to, to study history is to study change, for sure. Thank you for sharing us uh, with that. Guys and gals, again, please look this up because sometimes getting outside of your comfort zone as a storyteller and as a human being is necessary. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pinchot, for going deep. Uh, guys and gals, we're going to kick it over to Mr. Ferrigno, who will let us know why he selected The Godfather as a film that has educated him on a subject that has interested him greatly. Mr. Ferrigno, are you ready to go good, sir? Yes, you know, I come from an Italian-American family. My grandparents came from Amalfi, Italy. And I remember growing up, you know, because of Italian heritage, 
But I remember I first saw the movie The Godfather because especially I learned about the tradition, about the mafia, about the Italian family, especially when you see the movie, especially the food, the actors and everything. And I never forget that, you know, when I was young, you know, my family would make wine, especially uh, they would talk about different uh, characters, like for example, uh, the different mafia situation, especially Lucy Blassie, because I remember when the movie came out in 1972, a bunch of my friends were getting together, you know, myself, you know, being hard of hearing back then, I would listen to the conversation the best I could. And I remember they were talking about this movie about Brando, about uh, the, the whole scene behind uh, the Colon family. And uh, I was amazed because I decided to see the film because it relates a lot to my childhood growing up because I grew up in a Jewish Italian neighborhood. And especially when it goes back to Italy, when it came from Italy, especially when you see the movie, you learn a lot about Ellis Island. And you see how the people came to the uh, United States when they saw the Statue of Liberty, they knew that they arrived in America. It really hit me because, you know, we forget especially how much that movie affected us. So what I'm trying to say is that little did I realize that 50 years later, I got a chance to be in the TV series called The Offer to play Lucy Brassi because I read a lot about him. And it's funny that 50 years later, because the great move, the thing about the series about The Offer to educate you about the history of The Godfather, how it's made, how the movie got made, all the hardship, the obstacle to overcome, especially the finances and the dealing with the studio heads and the threats. So especially, uh, that's why to me it was a great education film, especially about the Italian-American uh, history back in the 1800s and 1900s, especially with Sicily, they go back in their, their hometown and they form this whole unity of the family. So the, to me, that's the most education uh, film because especially the history about the Italian-American uh, heritage, especially with, with the, the culture of, uh, back, goes back with Italy, the Irish Island, especially coming to America. I love that. That film could actually inspire someone to get to know more about their culture. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Ferrigno. Thank you. Yeah. Guys, Mr. Jerry Lucas will delve into an innovative way of teaching students as an educator that he is. Mr. Lucas, are you ready to go? Good, sir. I am, Abhi. The floor is yours. Well, first of all, uh, before I talk about the way that children can learn automatically, I want to talk about how children first learn. Prior to knowing the alphabet, prior to know numbers, children begin to learn and they never forget what they learn as children before going to school. And you're going to understand why in a moment. Every child learns as a parent points to and identify objects. That's a chair, that's a cat, that's a dog, that's a tree, etc. Now in this process, miracles are happening that the parent, the child aren't aware of because God has given us a remarkable learning tool that we've never been able to use in education and schools before. Every object that we see and identify is impossible to forget because every time we think of it, it reappears in our mind. I'm going to prove it to you all and all the listeners right now by asking you not to do something. Please do not see a zebra in your mind. Whatever you do, do not see a zebra. It's too late. You already saw a zebra, didn't you? What about an elephant? What about a tiger? What about a giraffe? They are there. You cannot forget them. Why? Because they have an identity. Now, as a young boy, my mind was incredibly active. You said in the introduction, I spelled words alphabetically. I did all kinds of things. But in the fourth grade, something happened to me that would cause me to have a direction for my entire life and something that my mind would do continuing to this day. Our teacher came in one day and she said, class, today I'm going to teach you how to remember the names of the Great Lakes by seeing a picture in your mind. That was the first and last time a picture would ever be used to teach me anything in education. She said, imagine the Great Lakes in your mind. Now see Holmes floating on the Great Lakes. And here's the reason why. Holmes is spelled H-O-M-E-S. And those are the beginning letters of the five Great Lakes, Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. Obviously, I thought to myself, I'll never forget this as long as I live. Every time I think of the Great Lakes, I'll see Holmes floating on them. I have an aid to remind me and teach me what the names are. But the next thought that went through my mind gave me the true purpose for my life. I thought to myself, what if I could picture everything I needed to learn to give it an identity? And from that day to this, that's all I've done. I've done an incredible amount of work over decades of work to give an identity to everything that children need to learn so it can be learned in the future, in the near future, as easy as a tree, a cat, a dog, or a horse. Now, if I, mention, if I say hippopotamus, all of us can see a hippopotamus we can talk about it because we know what it is and know what it looks like. But if I say something like, do you know the seven L-influenced vowels in the English language? 
I doubt that very many people out there have any idea what they are because they've never seen them. They don't have, haven't had a way to learn them visually. But in the future, I'm going to create an educational website known as Dr. Memories Universe. There'll be an alphabet planet, reading planet, writing planet, spelling planet, math planet, etc. Everything has been developed and created. It's all drawn, but it needs to be changed from 2D to 3D. And hopefully in the near future, the world will hear about Dr. Memories Universe and children who have never been able to learn because they can't learn abstract and intangible information that is simply ink on a page will see everything they need to learn tangibly and their lives will change forever. As a former history teacher, simply put, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jerry Lucas. I appreciate You're that. Thank you so much. And guys, more on this after the segment with Jerry Lucas as well. Uh, right now, we're going to start uh, voting again. How do you vote based on someone's idea, concept, philosophy, ideology, belief, emotion? Uh, again, this is a verbal presentation. We hope, guys and gals, that you know that as we always say here, everybody's a winner. It's not about the name, the acclaim, or the fame. We learn a lot by listening. And that's what we do here, guys and gals. It's nice to do that at the end of 2023. Uh, that being said, let's bring in Kelly White. Kelly, rather quickly, who do you think, who gets your vote and why, good sir? Okay, wow. Um, tough as always. Uh, not going to linger on that. Uh, I'm going to give this one to Bronson. He made me want to see this movie. He also made me not want to see it. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. That's well put. Mr. White, thank you again. Guys, we're going to turn it over to you right now. Let us know who you're voting for. Topic number two is coming up in about 30 seconds. Topic number two. All right, let's get to your votes, guys and gals and pals, and let's see who you are voting for and why. Again, please give these gentlemen so much because they're giving us so much. They're here live. They're giving us their time and their mind and their heart, and that's pretty awesome. Uh, guys and gals, let's do this again. I do want to say this, that our first vote is coming in. Okay, Jerry Lucas gets a vote. Thank you so much. Christy says, good job, Jerry. Is that a vote? Do I count that as a vote? I'm not sure. Uh, let's see who you're voting for. Jerry killed it. Again, I don't know if I should count that as a vote. Oh, God. I could hear uh, Richard Donner, who I always talk about, telling me, Avi, come on, stop being so such a teacher. Count that as a vote. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see what we got here, guys and gals. We have Patrick. Lou has my vote. Thank you so much for that. Mindy says, I vote for Bronson. Really felt how he felt when he had that vision. Thank you so much. And Mrs. Daniels occurs. No, it occurs. No, she has Jerry, Jerry Lucas. Thank you for the vote for Jerry Lucas. Okay, Giselle, thank you for tallying. Rory concurs and votes for Mr. Lucas as well. All right, guys. Stephen votes Bronson. Okay, this is very, very tough indeed. Remember, guys and gals, a lot of money on the line for whoever wins the entire tournament and a trip for two degrees, five days and five nights. I'm voting for Bronson. Very intriguing. Lou has my vote, according to Ramon Solomon. I vote for Lou. Okay, Jerry has my vote according to Julie. And Patrick concurs and says he also votes for Jerry. Why not make it a trifecta? Dakota says that as well. He will vote. Uh, Victoria Jimenez votes for Jerry. You see, guys and gals and pals, we appreciate you again. Six-figure views across the board. We will educate and entertain and give it our darndest to do so in a positive, uplifting manner. Uh, Mr. Lou has my vote. I'm going to start counting things down, guys and gals. Let's start counting things down for this round. Jerry gets another vote. And Christopher votes for Mr. Lucas as well. And Lucas Scott votes for Mr. Lucas. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and a 5. You know there's a 4 and a 3 and a 2 and a 1 and a 0. So with that, guys and gals, to tally things up right now after one riveting discussion, uh, we will tally things up and make sure that we let you know how things stand. But topic number two, Lou is going to start with topic number two, and it's all about most influential teacher. High school teachers always come and go. But it's okay. those select few that you will remember throughout your life. Guys and uh, gals, those special few that cared about us, each and every one of their students are the ones who helped us. And we always remember them for who they were and what they left us with. So Mr. Lou Ferrigno will let us know who he has selected as the most influential teacher in his life. And then Jerry Lucas will as well. And Bronson Pinchot. Mr. Ferrigno, are you ready to go? Good, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to say the person you probably know is called Joe Rito. When I was very young as a kid, you know, overcome, overcoming diversity with the hearing, the speech issue, I remember as a kid being beaten up, I used to read about comic book and, and that discovered Muscle Magazine because I was obsessed with power. I'll never forget, I see a guy standing there with a big chest pose, looking straight ahead and says, Joe Weeder, trainer champion. And they had all these different ways. And I'm looking at this picture and saying to myself, I wish I could meet this guy. Because eventually, over the course of time, I had a chance to come to California to train for the competition. I got a chance to get to know Joe Weeder. Joe was like a second father to me. He took me under his wing. He introduced me to art. He introduced me to history. He brought Schwarzenegger here from another country because back then, in Brooklyn, 
I had a severe relationship with my father. It was a love and hate relationship. So Joe was like my mentor because he convinced me to be the best I could be in myself, to learn to compete with myself. And he put a lot of positivity in me. So basically when I got to work with Joe, I've learned the best from him because Joe never uh, went past third grade education. He was self-educated. Myself and myself, me in the same situation because coming from the background I came from, I've learned from Joe that the sky is the limit. There's nothing that could stop you. That's why I'm, I'm probably the most competitive person with myself because as a bodybuilding champion, you compete with yourself. So Joe Reed, especially working with him, taking pictures in the magazine, helping me to shape my body and educate my mind, especially my uh, confidence, my self-being. So Joe's so influential, especially millions of bodybuilders, millions of people, or millions of people all over the world, especially with fitness. So to me, he had the most effect on my life because if it wasn't for Joe, I would be not speaking to you today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lou. Again, honoring his teacher, Mr. Joe Weeder, who inspired the masses. Uh, guys and gals, Mr. Jerry Lucas will let us know who he has selected as the most influential teacher in his life and will kindly explain why. Are you ready to go, good sir? I am. The floor is yours. Uh, the most influential teacher in my life was a junior high school teacher named Nellie Losh. She was my homeroom teacher for three years, and she was my English teacher for three years. She gave me a love of learning that was incredible. My parents could not give me that love for learning. They encouraged me, but they never got past the sixth grade. So when I got into junior high school and began to sit under her tutelage, I was amazed. She was dedicated. She was disciplined, which was very important to all of us. She was thorough. She knew us. She knew our needs. And she made it fun for us. Not, not only was it uh, something that we needed to do and had to do, but it was fun and enjoyable. And every day I look forward to going into her class and learning from her. She gave me a love for grammar and punctuation that was unbelievable. And today, grammar and punctuation are horribly used in America. You hear people talking on TV and every place else. I mean, they can't say a sentence correctly. They say me and him went someplace. I mean, it's awful where we have come to. And I am so thankful that I had a teacher like Nellie Losh who impressed upon me the importance of learning fundamentals and knowing it thoroughly and properly so I could use it the rest of my life. And I have spent my life helping others learn how to learn grammar and punctuation as well. Thank you, Mr. Lucas. Thank you so much. And you are an inspiration. And guys and gals, our teachers inspire us and hopefully we can pay it forward and do the same for the next generation. Mr. Bronson Pinchot, guys and gals, will also uh, kindly let us know who he is selected as the most influential teacher in his life. Are you ready to go, good sir? I am. The floor is yours. I started thinking of my, my favorite teachers, but then the answer came to me. And I, I love when the answer is not what I was consciously thinking. But uh, I, I keep seeing, I don't know why, these advertisements for knife sharpeners and, uh, and how, you know, you just keep dragging the knife through. And, and I don't think it's much fun for the knife, but <laughs> it does give it a life and makes it a good, good knife. And I had a teacher named Bart Toysh who was like a knife sharpener for my soul. He used one word and that word was bullshit. And I would start doing a, a performance and he would sit there and say bullshit. One word would come out. If I was doing, you know, Hamlet's to be or not to be, I'd say to be bullshit. And he he was relentless i don't think in all the years i knew him because i continued to be in touch with him when i had started my career and was having a lot of success he would see me on the street or or he would run into me and he would say i don't know what you thought you were doing but that whole performance was bullshit. but anyway i realize now decades later that he, with that one word, was saying, at no time in any performance must you allow yourself to do anything but give a laser beam from right there of what is true and authentic. And if you do anything even a little bit less, then you are full of bullshit and you shouldn't be up there. And he was a difficult teacher, but I still hear him in my head. And I think that that is the... To me, that's the standard, especially on film, when the film, you know, the cameras weigh in on your soul. If you commit 
to not putting crap out there, um, you can actually make a difference, certainly for yourself and maybe for someone watching, like little Lou Ferrigno as a child watching that movie. I mean, there's more to it than just the words that he couldn't hear. There's also something about the soul, right, Lou, of, of, of Italy and the, and the soul of family and all that. It, is, it's, it was peripherally about the mafia, but it's also about something else, about the grandfather sitting in the tomato patch and all that. And so, you, talk, you know, talk about a laser coming out. But that, that's mine. Thank you so much, guys. We're about to get into our third topic. And uh, Bronson, I teach the craft of storytelling for free. And I always say, you can't exhume Shakespeare and sweet talk him into writing you a different line. You've got to be very honest and very committed. And you had a great amount of talent. And your teacher said, look, you may not have known what you did, but you have it. And are you willing to learn? And it's through the work ethic that you have that I think uh, your talent was able to shine through. That's my own opinion. Uh, but I do appreciate all of your works of art. Because as I've always told you, they're very honest and truthful, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, guys and gals, we're going to start uh, voting really quickly. And then third topic, final topic right now, uh, Mr. Kelly White. Uh, quickly, who do you have and who do you vote for in this particular topic and why? Okay, real quick. Again, great job, gentlemen. Much respect. But due to the scope, depth, and heart of his statement, my vote goes to Lou. Lou Ferrigno gets Kelly White's vote, guys and gals. Uh, guys, remember, we still have much more of the Celebrity Tournament to come. One of the biggest film directors will be here in a few weeks. One of the greatest, absolute greatest baseball players will be here. I like to make sure we have a group of people that may not have met one another, but after this segment, respect one another because we're not different. We all are all the same, guys. There's no dividing line at all. Uh, that being said, let's start voting right now and see. All right. One for Bronson. Is that Rory? I got your vote. Ashley concurs and also votes Bronson. Steven votes Jerry Lucas. Mrs. Lake votes for Lou, and Brian votes for Lou. Completely gets my vote. Okay. I see it with the caps and the five exclamation points. Uh, vote, vote, vote. Can't wait. Bronson gets my vote. Thank you, Lucas Scott. We appreciate that. Uh, guys and gals, I'm working out. Uh, Lou, I'm working out the old finger today with uh, the comments here. I vote for I vote for Lou, uh, according to Sheila Chatelaine. Uh, once again, Alex says I vote for Bronson. Patrick votes for Lou. Guys, we're about to start topic number two, and it's only 6.03 p.m. Eastern time. We have plenty of time to finish the third topic right now, which is coming up. My vote goes to Jerry this round. Mel says Bronson gets my vote. Craig Allen Leap says Lou. Okay. Deidre mm -hmm. Smith says Bronson. Thank you very much for your vote. Bronson gets my vote. All right. Guys and gals and pals, Lou has my vote. My vote goes to Lou. There's an interesting story that I'll tell later regarding Bronson and Lou as well, regarding a screenplay that I wrote that reminds us why we're all just a few people away from one another. Uh, Julie Hall says, fantastic night voting for Bronson. These are some great answers. Well, yeah, they're giving us their heart, which we love. Again, to our uh, sponsor and to everyone watching us right now, we get greenlit here, guys and gals. We're proving that we can have a good time and educate and keep things also very clean. That's the goal as always. I vote for Bronson. Okay. Jeff says, I vote for Bronson. Got that? All right, guys and gals. I did get that. Uh, whoever wrote that, get that. Yeah, you don't have to get hostile with me. Jerry Lucas gets my vote. <laughs> all right. I vote for Lou. Vo uh, guys, I can't count all of these. I'll do my best. Uh, Bronson reminds me, uh, guys and gals, of that teacher from Whiplash. You're talking about J.K. Simmons. Thank you for the vote. Ken Mulroney votes Lou. Jerry gets your vote, Julie, and Bronson. Guys, I'm going to count this thing down right now. And if I didn't count your votes, don't worry. We have a third topic. And again, remember, guys and gals, we're here every Saturday night. There has been three different luminaries coming here live every Saturday for a year. For a year. 62, as of tonight, 65. Hall of Famers, Oscar, Golden Globe, Tony, Emmy, and Grammy Award winners. All here, guys and gals, participating in living room style conversation. So, with that, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, you know, there's a 3 and a 2 and a 1, and then there's a 0. So, with that, guys and gals, again, we are tallying things up. We will not read where things stand just yet because topic number three is coming up. And, guys, everyone has a different question for this thought provoking question. I have to say this Truman Capote was a witty guy, he was famous for his conversational prowess, and he was, yeah, slightly ridiculous uh, the, uh, viewpoint about things. But he once said, a conversation is a dialogue, not a monologue. And that's why there are so few good conversations due to scarcity. 
two intelligent talkers seldom do meet, perhaps. But tonight we have three. So guys, Mr. Lou Ferrigno, his question is, to what extent does a person shape their own destiny and how much is it down to fate? Mr. Ferrigno, are you ready to go good, sir? Yeah, uh, as you use extent because life is about choice. I, I speak all over the world. I talk about overcoming fear. You see, everybody has a choice because a lot of people have this negative voice in their head. They listen to this different story. But in order to be successful, you have to learn how to compete with yourself. And it's all about passion. You have to find the right passion for yourself because that makes you rich. That makes you unstoppable because everybody wants to look at the other picture and have fantasy. But the thing is that you have to own your mind. You have to focus. You have to have that vision and choice. Because people sometimes they have obesity. Sometimes people become drug addicts. It's all about choice. But think of that you can control control your destiny. Meaning, I say, live life, moderately, be very consistent. Don't overindulge anything. Like for example, don't overindulge like in food, excessive alcohol, drugs, and stuff like that. Because that keeps you focused. Because you have to connect the mind with the body. Because especially what I mainly want to stress on, you have to overcome that fear factor. You have to embrace that fear factor. Because when you have a destiny in life. What you choose to do, you have to take risks. You have to get fall down. You have to get hit, get up again. You have to fight, accept the risk. That's what makes you control your destiny. Because if you have fear of control, controlling your destiny, you're not going to be successful. Because people have made different choices. In my situation, I never want to be an unhappy person. When I was a kid, I came from a broken home, but I had a vision that I wanted to be successful. I had short and long term vision. I just say when I wanted to do it, I went after it. Even though with that, I got knocked down a few times, but nothing could stop me because I control my own destiny. It's about the fear factor, embracing the fear, and be determined, be fierce with yourself, and compete with yourself, and be the best you can be. Thank you for your passion and your experience. Thank you. And You're thank right. you for inspiring others to be the best they can be and to remind them to compete against themselves. Thank you, Mr. Ferrigno. Uh, guys and gals, we're winding things down right now. A different question for Mr. Lucas, who will let us know how he can explain educational success in his very own words. Mr. Lucas, are you ready to go? Good, sir. Yes, uh, thank you, Avi. Um, educational success to me is knowledge. If someone does not uh, get to the point where they uh, have knowledge, the work that they've done, what they've gone through, what has happened in their lives really doesn't make much difference. So no matter, how, no matter what we do, no matter what we study, no, no matter how we do it, and there are many ways to learn today, and there are many ways that people try to learn today, but if they don't get to that ultimate goal, which is to know the things that they've been studying so that they can use them, not only to gain the knowledge, but have the ability to use it in a positive way that's going to help other people. We can learn things that aren't going to help other people. I, I'm a man of God. I've been a man of God for many, many years. I study the Bible every day of my life, and I want to re live a righteous life. And I want my thought process, the things that I think, the actions that I perform, and things that I do to come from the knowledge of the Word of God so I can make a difference in other people's lives. So education to me is that process. Now, I'm talking about the Word of God, which I don't know how many people talk about on this show, but it's something that changes people's lives for the good. And that is something we need to learn and acquire and use in our lives to make a difference in other people's lives. So no matter how you learn, no matter how do you get there, and hopefully in the future, millions of young children are going to use the gift of God that I talked about earlier so that they can learn automatically and not forget. But we must attain the knowledge that will allow us to help other people. Thank you, Mr. Lucas, for sharing us your heart, my friend. Thank you. Uh, guys and gals, our last uh, topic for this incredible human being named Mr. Bronson Pinchot. His question is, is if a main, excuse me, if a main component to happiness is human connection, is the presence of so much technology affecting our happiness? Good, sir, whenever you are ready. I thought about that long and hard after I saw it in your email. And I have to say with great happiness and optimism that, in fact, no, it's doing the same thing as if you're lucky enough to see a solar eclipse what does it make you what does it make you want it makes you want to see the sun and i have noticed myself that with this inundation of you know i mean i'll scroll like everybody else on instagram all night looking at funny videos but when i walk to the gym and that somebody's holding a one and a half year old baby and the baby is facing me and i look at the baby like what a beautiful face you've got 
and I'm just looking and the baby smiles. That is, I think, 10 times more powerful than it might have been 15 years ago because it's a ray of, of real light in a world of, you know, scrolling and junk and funny videos and influencers and all that. Uh, my sister got me this little uh, Christmas wreath for the cabin that I live in. And the smell of it is so potent. It's so potent. I think it must be more potent than when I was a little boy and they brought in the Christmas tree because everything around me is so flashy. And uh, I, I feel that in a funny way, it has done the opposite of what we might think in our surface minds that has done. I, I think it has made real, meaningful, soulful stuff jump into the foreground and feel more authentic and more important and more visceral than, than it was before. That's what I have discovered. Thank you so much, guys and gals and pals. Remember, especially on stage, no mistakes, only discoveries. Uh, just remember that. Try things out during rehearsals and see where it goes. But guys, Mr. Pincho has gone deep, just like Lou Ferrigno and Jerry Lucas has. Uh, we're done. Kelly White's going to let us know who he votes for. And then I'll tell your votes and find out who moves to round number two of this tournament. And remember, guys and gals, two out of three will, unless it is a three-way tie, which has happened. Let's see how it goes. Round number two starts in a few months. Kelly White, who do you vote for in this final topic and why? Good, sir. All right. Um, phew. Tougher every round, but uh, once again, kind of same reason. Scope, depth, heart. I got to give it to Lou one more time. Mr. White votes for Lou Ferrigno. Thank you, Mr. White, for judging as well. I appreciate you. Thank you. I'm a very intelligent human being, very classy. Guys, we're going to count your votes right now. It is 6, 12 p.m. Pacific, 9, 12 p.m. Eastern time, uh, and we're done with these topics. Let's see uh, Let's see who you voted for and who moves on to round number two. Uh, Lou, and that rhymes with two. So thank you, Kenyon Pride, for helping me. Uh, <laughs> Kenny votes for Lou. I love words. I'm a geek for words. I'm sorry. Lewis says, Lewis votes for Lou. Q Cuts Brown votes for Mr. Ferrigno. All right. Kenyon Pride, I think you already voted for Mr. Ferrigno. I see what you're trying to do there. Julie votes for Mr. Bronson Pinchot. And again, guys, uh, I know how cliche it sounds. Everyone's a winner here. Okay, we got another vote for Lou. Lou all the way. All right. Remember, guys and gals, if the second and third participants are tied, everyone moves to round number two in a few months when round number one finishes up. Guys and gals, we have just heard from Bronson Pinchot, who I would love to see play Richard II, by the way. Uh, guys, let's see where we go here. All three were amazing, yes, because they're truthful and honest and beautiful, and that's what matters. I loved all the answers. This is very close. I'm going to go with Bronson, Jerry, Lou. Lou gets two more. Guys, I'm going to count this thing down right now. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six five and a four and a three and a two and a one in first place guys and gals moving to round two of the celebrity tournament who knows who will be on screen with mr lou ferrigno he's moved on in a few months to move on to round number two of this exclusive field and guys and gals it's happened before not many times we've had what 52 matchups it's happened four times mr jerry lucas and bronson pinchot had the same amount of votes they too will move on to round number two of the Celebrity Tournament. Guys and gals, thank you for your votes as well. Uh, Lou, I'm going to talk to you first, my friend, and then bid you adieu. And then Bronson and Jerry, Lou, did you have a good time, my friend? Yeah, I had a fabulous time. Thanks for having me on the show. I don't have to leave this to give a speech tonight. But yes. I really enjoyed seeing Bronson, Jerry, and it's been my pleasure. Looking forward to round two, Mr. Ferrigno. Yeah. Lou Ferrigno, guys and gals. He is in the second round of this tournament. And you know what? I didn't want to bring this up. Guys, one of the most important speeches of this man's life was tonight. And I asked him, hey, can you uh, maybe do it in January instead? You don't have to do it tonight. He goes, no, I want to do this tonight. Uh, and a couple of the reasons, the topics, and of course, meeting uh, Jerry again. He says he had met him many years ago. And Bronson, who we remembered as well, which was really cool. Uh, Bronson, I have to ask you the same question. Did you have a good time, my friend, tonight? I did. It is, and as, as Jerry may, may concur, it is so seldom, so seldom that you do uh, an, an interview with others. And, uh, you know, normally you're in a normal thing. You're on a thing where everybody is selling something. They're selling the project they're in. They're selling the book they've written. And uh, 
your ear, I think, I think the ear can tell the difference between someone thinking in real time and somebody just doing a prepared thing because they're selling their movie again. And sure. Again. So it's so unusual to be engaged in what everybody else is saying and to, and to, and to want to listen because it's, you know, it's happening, it's happening real time and it's not a, a, a frozen dinner as it were being served. <laughs> I love, I love learning about uh, people and their journey and, uh, this craft is all I have, and I love it. And I love that you have committed so much to it as well. Uh, gosh, I wish I could have been there in uh, the public theater, Shakespeare in the Park, in Central Park, to see you in the Winter's Tale. That was that must have been an incredible experience, Bronson. It was it was amazing. Absolutely, uh, Bronson. You also um, have a lot coming down the pike because you are always working, my friend. Anything you would like to discuss right now? Let our audience know about because you are always working. Um, there's, a, there's Beverly Hills Cop 4, which has been 30 years in the making, it is 80% shot. And that should be coming out at some point. I mean, it, I, it, it was completely shot, but I, I think there's some reshoots they're going to do. And then there's a new Shonda Rhimes show, uh, murder mystery called The Residence, which we are shooting now. And that, that should be out, I, I would imagine next, next year. They're, they're both uh, pretty wonderful. That is absolutely amazing. I, I think it's amazing that in South Africa, you're at a big banquet in a room that was the size of a square city block. And Nelson Mandela sends a message over and say, we know that Bronson's the character he portrayed with Surge in Beverly Hills Cop. We know he's here. Kind of mind blowing, right? No, he, he the action was even better because they were yeah. big, perfect strangers. Uh, Nelson and Winnie Mandela and wow. all the chieftains that had married their, their daughters. Sure. So he's, she she came up to me herself and gave me this gigantic bone crushing hug, which I had, I still had, had <laughs> collapsed ribs because she's a passionate lady. But he sent a messenger to the table and the message said, um, we can't go table to table or, or people will start to get upset about who we're we're, you know, not visiting. But sure. we know that, we know that cousin Balky is here. We know that he, we know <laughs> our cousin is here is what he said, wow. which is amazing. Sad. It is. And, you know, I have to tell you, thank you for that compliment earlier, because you received a compliment from Carol Burnett that you did a show once with. And she said, you're one of us. You oh, know, yeah. That, that said, means you're an introvert who does a damn good imitation of an extrovert. And an and introvert doing a very, very good imitation of, of an extrovert. That's what I am. And that's what I know you are. I'm not sure about <laughs> Jerry. He's he's too, he's too he's too. I, I and I, I think Jerry's just what I, I think Jerry is what he is. He is not doing an sure. imitation. He's not doing an imitation of anything. But uh, but you, Avi, are uh, yeah. What what You're gave one. it away? <laughs> My gosh. Oh God and guys, guys and gals, again, thank you, uh, Bronson. Before I bid you adieu, again, I do want to bring this up because it came out of you, out of your mouth, of course, because it's a quote that really resonates with me. Uh, Hollywood is like the foyer. The real building that you want to get to is storytelling and guiding people's emotions. Hollywood is not that. Hollywood is the vestibule that you have to go through. It's the glitzy part you have to go through. Gosh, I that's good. That. I said that? Yes, sir. <laughs> that Actually, is good. Now that I hear you saying it, it reminds me more of the toilet. You kind of have to go. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I got to tell you, first 10 years working in the studio system as a writer, people think, oh, you're making so much money and you're buying houses. Yeah, that's not really the case at all. Uh, but man, I got to tell you once again, Bronson, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, you know, it, it is fun. It is fun to know that we're moving on to that second round and, you know, trip for two degrees for the w person who takes it all. Uh, are you looking forward to round number two, Mr. Pincho? Um, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just. <laughs> Jerry's got a great. <laughs> Jerry's fun to make smile. All right. I got to hop off because I've got to I've got to go finish a book I'm doing. Okay? Yes, sir. Bronson right. Pincho, thank you for joining us. Bye, guys. Uh, man, Jerry, what what a night it was. Did you have fun? My, my I really did, Avi. Thank you. I, I really appreciated Lou and Bronson, uh, their thoughtfulness, their answers, uh, the in-depth uh, uh, comments that they made were really, really enlightening to me. I mean, I appreciated them. I've been fans of theirs for some time sure. and I uh, just enjoyed being with them tonight. It was, it was great. Jerry, I have to fill you in on this because, guys, we're going to talk about a lot of very interesting things uh, that Jerry Lucas will teach us about in such a very entertaining way. But uh, would you believe Bronson, the same thing as, as Lou, this was a week where I've never had this happen, but two luminaries such as yourself, two luminaries said, hey, Avi, um, we really want to do Saturday night. There is something in our agenda right now 
and we don't want to skip this. And I asked Bronson, I said, would you want to do January? He said, no, I want to do Saturday. I said, why? He goes, Lou's going to be there and Jerry's going to be there. And I love your topics. He says, if I get to keep these topics, can I do January? I said, no, it's going to be given to somebody else. He goes, I'm coming on Saturday no matter what. And then and then Lou, with his biggest speech of his life, I literally, I booked Lou only about three days ago. Uh, somebody else was coming in. Uh, I remember I gave you a different name. And right. then, of course, yeah. And, and then Lou was like the same thing. He goes, if I could be on with Jerry Lucas, and he sourced some of the previous videos. He says, Avi, I actually don't want to wait. I really love what this show and what it represents. I want to be on as soon as possible. And it's amazing to know how we can all come together. And I know this sounds sappy, but I'd rather say this to everyone. I'd rather be cynical. Guys and gals, excuse me. I'd rather be sappy than cynical. I'm not a cynical person. I like how I know that you and Lou and Bronson and everybody watching could at least sit back on a Saturday night and know what they're going to get. They're not going to get a car wreck. They're not going to get disrespect. They're not going to get talking heads who embarrass and insult each other. They're going to get people who might have different viewpoints, but come here to listen. Would you concur? I do very, very, very much. I, I appreciate it. As I said, what they had to say, it was a, a, an excellent night for me. I, I didn't know what to expect. Obviously you never know what to expect when you're going <laughs> to do something, but I was thrilled and excited. Um, I, I, I really, I, I think that more than anything else, uh, you know, it was enlightening to me to have some people say the things they said. And what Bronson said about me was really touched my heart. He said, yes. I think Jerry is who Jerry is. And that's the way I've always tried to live my life. I've, I've, I've not sought fame. When I was the number one high school basketball player in America, I refused to be recruited. I, wa I didn't want to be someone that was put on a pedestal and lifted up above my other friends and uh, my teammates. I just wanted to be someone who was part of my friends and doing the things that I should do as a young teenage person and, and not have my thoughts twisted and put someplace where they shouldn't be. And as a teammate, I always wanted to be a perfect teammate. You know, one of my dear friends, Joe Roberts, who unfortunately has passed and gone now, said about me at Ohio State, he said, Jerry, he was our best player we had, but he never wanted to be a star. He just wanted to be one of the guys. So that has been important to me my entire life. I've always wanted to help people. I've always wanted to be one of them and not put myself in a place where I felt that I was more important or better than somebody else. And to hear Bronson say what he said tonight was very, very touching to me. You deserve it. And guys, before we delve into right now, some really very interesting and helpful ways uh, to help and teach students. Uh, via Jerry Lucas, who's been doing this his whole life, I really want to go down the rabbit hole because I respect you greatly. And this might have been something that was written over a half a century ago in a dressing room. And I want to read it, see if you remember it. The moral of this quaint example is to do just the best that you can. Be proud of yourself, but remember, there is no indispensable man. In contrast to this uplifting sentiment, guys and gals, Lucas is an indispensable man. We're talking about a poem that was posted in the Ohio State dressing room over half a century ago, uh, many a times. And that really speaks to me, Lou. Jerry, excuse me. That really does speak to me. Well, thank you, Avi. The, those comments are always, you know, they're great to hear. Uh, you, you can't let them get to, you know, get to you and, and get you thinking things that you shouldn't think. That's why I try to stay grounded daily in the Word of God and to live a righteous life and, and to have love in my heart and think the right things and speak the right things uh, that will help people and make a difference in people's lives. That's always been the purpose of my life. I retired from professional basketball. We never made any money when I played. I was the number one draft choice when I came out of, out of Ohio State into the NBA, and I made $30,000 a year, not 60, 50 million like they make today. So I never made a lot of money. You know, that wasn't important to me. But what was important to me was to make a difference in other people's lives. That's why I've done what I've done. I wanted to make a difference in education so that young people who have had problems learning in the past, and they're gifted. These, these, there are millions of young people who never learned to read and write, and they're all gifted. If I sat down with them and I said, you know what, a, a cow, a horse, a tree, a monkey, a squirrel, a wrench, a spoon, a knife, a, spork, a, a, a fork, a glass are, yes, 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 yes. But they have a problem learning abstract and intangible data yeah. that is simply ink on a page. But they have the gift if that abstract and intangible material had an identity and it had its own, the way you can see it and know what it was, they would never forget it. And that's why I've spent my life doing what I've done because I want to make a difference. 
Money has never entered into my lifetime as to how I should spend my time and what I should do. When I retired from basketball, I, I, I memorized the entire New Testament, Avi. It made a remarkable difference in my life. And I realized that God had prepared me from the time I was a little boy in the fourth grade, like I told you earlier, uh, who wanted to identify everything that needed to be learned. I had 25 years of experience in doing that. And it was time for me to make a difference with the gift that God had given me. And for the next four years, I just researched. I read hundreds wow. and hundreds of textbooks. The most boring thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> I was reading, I was picturing everything I was reading. Everything, because I had 25 years of experience to do that. And I wanted to give identities to things that children needed to learn so they could learn them easily. Then I hired a young, a young artist. His name was Mike Webster, a great young Mike man. I sat down with him the first day, and I was going to have a little fun with him, Bobby. I said, okay, Mike, let's get started. First thing I want you to do is draw a picture of a pronoun for me. He paused, and he looked at me, and very funny. He said, what would you say, Mr. Lucas? Drawing a pronoun. <laughs> I said, I want you to draw a pronoun for me so we can get started. He said, sir, I can't do that. I said, why? He said, what's a pronoun? I've never seen a pronoun. I said, Mike, you're going to draw tens of thousands of things that nobody has ever seen. Let's get started. And we did. There were no computers in those days. I, I would tell him what to draw. He would draw and we put them in file cabinets. Things began to expand wow. and grow. I developed curricula and remarkable things began to happen. You know, and for instance, let me let me give you a little example of some things that we do today to me that are just so wrong. If you go into any kindergarten or first grade class in, in, in America, you're going to see the letters of the alphabet around the top of the room. Then you're going to see pictures under each letter about apple, a ball, a cat, and a dog. What? To me, that, that that's so wrong, because what are we? We're not trying to teach him the abacadas. We're trying to teach him the A B C's. Yes. So the picture under the letter A should say what A, and not only that, it should look exactly like the A. The characters should look like exactly like that letter to make it easy for them to identify, etc. And then, and I've done beyond that. It's remarkable what I've been able to do. It I've really been able is. to create alphabet friends that actually will speak to the child, tell them their sound, they will see the sound. I have a character by the name of Wordy the Word Pecker. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's going to peck on letters in words and the alphabet friend is going to appear over that letter and they're going to see the sound the letter makes. Wordy and the and the alphabet friend will talk back and forth and it's going to be a remarkable... It remarkable sounds amazing because it, teach, it also reminds children that they're not being bogged down by a That's system right. That could be overwhelming. And I love that. I mean, uh, guys, I want to bring this up because I know you won't. You're a very humble human being. Uh, you hosted a television special called the Jerry Lucas Super Kids Day Magic Jamboree, uh, which featured a lot of educational word games, number puzzles, magic tricks. So this is something that has always been a passion of yours. Always. always. It always has. Been. I quit doing magic years ago because I didn't, as I wrote my memory books and so forth, I didn't want people to think that the systems that I had created were tricks. They're not tricks. Sure. They're systems that work. So I have spent my life developing the material. There, there are I have hundreds of characters, hundreds of characters uh, that that the kids will learn, know, love. I've written two hundred songs. Uh, wow. There are incredible wow. environments. Like if you go, you go on the Alphabet Planet, go down Alphabet Alley. Man, it's like an alley you've never seen before. Remarkable things happen there, and they learn all the things they need to about each letter. And some exciting things happen, obviously. So the world doesn't know about it yet, but the, I'm starting to raise the funds. When those yes. funds are fully available, so the work will start. I have the best people in America who are going to work with me. For instance, my music person is named Adam Gubman. Okay. Adam has written many, many songs for Disney. He writes for Star Wars. He writes for Marvel. I have those kind of people who are excited. They, I've made in-depth presentations to them. They love my material. They're excited about it. And so hopefully within the next few months, we'll get started and it will make a remarkable difference for millions of young people who have not been able to learn by repetition, but will learn with the gifts that God has given them. And as we've talked about, as something that we have spoke about, I should say, uh, on the phone via text about 27 minutes ago, you have another great meeting on January the 25th. More on that off screen uh, because they are listening and I'm glad that they are. Uh, yes, I mean, essentially, guys and gals, Jerry Lucas is a man who's always driven and that really inspires me because uh, there's nothing wrong with people who essentially have a goal and they check off a box. But it seems to me like you are restless for all the right reasons, if that makes any sense. 
Well, you know, I, you know that is in, that's very insightful, Abby. Very insightful. Thank you. I've always been sort of restless, and my mind has been absolutely constantly in motion. Sure. As a young boy, I counted everything I saw. I wow. began to spell words alphabetically. Every word I ever saw, I, I rearranged the letters and put them in alphabetical order just to have my mind have something to do. For instance, the word cat is spelled C-A-T. Alphabetically, it's A-C-T. A comes before C and C before T. I'm looking at a computer, C-E-M-O-P-R-T-U. There's a television, E-E-I-O-S-T-V. Picture, C-E-I-P-R-T-U. Absolutely useless, but it kept <laughs> my mind busy and active. My mind always had something to do. And as I said earlier, in the fourth grade, when that teacher taught me that principle of how to learn the, uh, the Great Lakes by seeing a picture in my mind, and I thought, wow, what if I could picture everything I needed to learn? I, I was off and running, and my mind's been doing that ever since. It's, it's inspiring. And I think the following joke is something that you would get. Maybe not other people would, but I, I, w- I want to deliver it to you. It's not really much of a joke. It's more an observation. The word affinity has eight letters, but it bothers me that it has four syllables. It's almost like it's one of those eight-letter words that's showing off and says, you got to spend time to pronounce me. I've got four syllables, even though I only got eight letters. You can understand that, right? 24 hours in a day, time's a-wasting. We don't need eight-letter words with four syllables, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we need to know, what youngsters need to do is no matter what that word is, they need to know how to read it. That's the thing. Right, and they right. need to, you know, you know the, things, the things that kids, first of all, need to learn, obviously, yeah. if, I mean, I don't know. There are any teachers out there are listening. But sure. if they're a literacy teacher, obviously the kids have to learn the basic sounds. You know, I have to learn the what I call normal sounds. The letter A makes two normal sounds, a long A and a short A. A is an ape and A is an apple. They learn those. But then it's the other th- sounds in the past that have caused the problems. And there are so many of them. L influence vowels, R influence vowels. And I've changed the verbiage in a lot of places. Yes. I, as I read all these t- textbooks, I read about diphthongs and digraphs. And then, right. And, we, and, they, and, the, and the, the PhDs that wrote these books defined them in ways that there was no way a child could understand what they were saying. No. And I've no. changed the names. I've changed to something called consonant changers. It's very easy to understand. They are consonants that change their sound. And the wow. and the alphabet friends that I picture the picture of the letter use sure. old-fashioned money changers. And they and, and they put change down on a symbol because a symbol makes sound and the new sound that they would they now make appears below it and they can see the sound. And it's not an abstract, intangible nothing. It is a something. So we've been trying to teach nothing, if you will, in the past, yeah. because ink on a page is nothing. But no, if it can be something that they yeah. can see and never forget, it'll change their lives forever. And that's what I've spent my life doing. No, and it's so it's so liberating, too, to, to know, to talk, to speak to someone who not only does something with a purpose, but has really went down the rabbit hole as you have. And that's why this, and to anyone listening, guys and gals, this is a man, Jerry Lucas, who was easily one of the greatest NBA players of all time, but also easily one of the greatest educators of all time. This is not some new idea. This is something that Jerry Lucas has not only developed, so it's not like he's selling it. This is something that succeeded already. There's been turnaround. There's data. People yeah, have been able well, to. Yeah. It, I mean, it. you know, unfortunately, we've never been able to use it in education to this point. Think of this. How many people you know have ever even thought of giving a tangible identity to every abstract and intangible piece of data that children need to learn? I guarantee you I'm the only person that's ever lived who has probably ever thought of doing that. But beyond that, I've done it. And it will make a remarkable difference. And my life, my life will have been had a purpose for it because the, the work that I've done Abby, Abby, once I started this work, I got up at 3 a.m. every morning and went to bed at midnight for 40 years. Wow. I slept three hours wow. a night for 40 years. You can't get anything done lying in that sack. And I, you know, by 3 a.m. To, to my children got up in the morning, I got all <laughs> kinds of work done. And so it's taken that effort. If you're going to revolutionize the entire educational process, not only is it literacy, there's an alphabet planet, a reading planet, a writing planet in my universe. There's a math planet. There's a grammar and punctuation planet. There's a vocabulary planet. And yes. all of it's done. You know, artists have uh, uh, have drawn it all. It's all finished, but it's in 2D. And so the money is needed today to change everything from 2D to 3D, which is ha- 
you have to have the data to make it to make it palatable for young people. Um, thank you, Kelly, for that comment. Uh, for those that know me well, uh, good sir, I'm in bed at 3 a.m. and I'm up at 5:30 every day because I believe in what we're doing here on Saturday nights and with this network. I believe that we can bring luminaries together to have meaningful discussions about topics that matter with some pomp and circumstances and some intros and videos and have a good time as well. But uh, that's that's what I do, because I know if I cheat myself or shortchange myself, Mr. Lucas, I'm not going to accomplish my goals. So no, I, what no, you no, said no. resonated with me. Yeah. Well, let me tell you this, just just to, for a little fun. Sure. Uh, you, you don't know what a pronoun is. I want to tell you what yes, a pronoun sir. is, right? A pronoun is a nun who was a pro golfer swinging a golf club. She's a pronoun. <laughs> 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 and and they, love it, they laugh at it. And what she does teaches them what a pronoun is, you know. Right. So it takes the place of a noun. And they see that happen. They see it visually. <laughs> so, uh, like a, a vowel. I have a picture for a vowel. It's an owl wearing a V-neck sweater. It's a vowel. Oh, my God. And a, a silly bull, a syllable is a silly bull. I have a great character called Silly Bull. And they're all drawn there. Great kids are going to love them. And they're going to wow. identify with them. I have as many characters as Disney. Yeah. I have... I have I've written probably 200 songs, and this, many of them are learning songs. Incredible. Many yeah. of them are character songs, and some of them are fun songs. I wrote a song entitled Jum Jingo, Amazing, Stunormous Qualerary. It's kind of like supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. It's <laughs> Jum Jingo, Amazing, Stunormous Qualerary. Kids hear it. My grandkids hear it. They, they dance around. They have fun. So it, it's just a fun place. It'll be the most fun that children have ever had learning. And it'll change their lives forever. Please, please consider, if I compensate you for this, uh, for this following task, to come down and meet some of the younger writers that I tutor, and please help them, because I'm not getting through to them. Maybe you can. We need you. We need you in Hollywood, Jerry Lucas. We need you. Oh my well, God. My place is not in Hollywood. My place. My place is working like today. I spent eight <laughs> hours today working. I spent eight my hours. My gosh. Writing. I, you know, I'm, I've written the whole script for the entire for the entire course too. That's Whatever incredible. character says, I've incredible. written the whole script. That I've directed it and put the scenery, what the scenery is behind it. Wow, I've done a lot of work, of it, and I love it. I mean, I can't wait to get up every day, and, and, and you know, and, and God has blessed me and gifted me. I, I'm I'm an older person now, but I'm still in great health. Uh, my mind works beautifully. I yes, mean, sir. I could, go, I could memorize a hundred page magazine in no time because I know how to do it. You know. And so those are the, Incredible. I mean, it's just great to have the opportunity to get up every morning, know you're doing something purposeful and meaningful, and you're doing God's calling in your life. Nothing is better than that. I want to bring in an educator in the back. She, uh, she's also an educator. I want her to just uh, really quickly, guys and gals, because Jerry, guys, has also been here for quite some time. He's in round number two of the Celebrity Tournament, where essentially more conversations and different topics will be presented in a few months to all of those who've advanced uh, his good friend Rick Barry, of course, is in round number two as well. Uh, Giselle, I want to bring you in. You're an educator. Uh, please let me know what this discussion has done to you and what uh, Jerry Lucas's amazing work, not just ideas, work, successful work at that, whether or not that's resonated with you as well. It has. This is very interesting to me because I am working with a lot of kids with special needs, a lot of kids who are on the spectrum, and we have these picture identifiers for them as a way to communicate. So we have the sign for more, or we have the X for no, and I forget what the one for yes is, but green and red. So we have colors and we have pictures there, and I didn't think about bringing this in to a more neurotypical population, but I can understand where you're coming from. So I think some of this has, in a way, been implemented into some of the school systems, but certainly not to the extent that you would <laughs> like it to be. Yeah, and right. enjoy it. And it will, and it will. And the what I'm creating will be an educational website, as I said earlier, mm -hmm. that'll be known as Dr. Memories Universe, totally self-teaching. I and all my characters do the teaching. And it's going to be an experience that children will never forget. When they become a subscriber, it's going to be very reasonable. The child will give them a tour of the whole universe. They will build their own planet. They will construct. They will bring in continents and rivers and mountains, etc. They will then choose a spot on that, uh, uh, on that planet, and they will construct their own home and understand what all is about it. They will choose a chassis, wow. and they will build and decorate their own spaceship in which they will fly from planet to planet to learn and have a ball 
No, I have an enemy. Of course, everybody has an enemy. My enemy in uh, Dr. Mermy's universe is Sourpuss. Her name is Sourpuss, and she's a real Sourpuss, and her minions are the Learning Blues. Hard, boring, tiring, no fun, time-consuming, and just plain yuck. And that's what <laughs> most people think about learning. It's hard. It's boring. It's tiring. It's no fun. It's time-consuming, and it's just plain yuck. And they're blue characters. Hard is made out of rocks. No fun is made out of funnels. And so, I mean, we have hundreds of characters like this that the kids will identify, enjoy, and love. And they will learn like they've never learned before. And the most important thing is they will not forget it. I mean, if I, like I said earlier, it's impossible to forget those items that have an identity. You know, if I say monkey, we all see a monkey. We can't forget what a monkey is. You know, if I say wrench, we all see a wrench. By the way, I, I have some special wrenches. I have a character and one of my uh, uh, characters, his name, his name is the cartooner. He takes care of my, my vehicles and my spaceship, the cartooner. He's a good old boy with a southern accent. And he you know, has that accent, you know, and he and when he talks about his tools, he said, I got a really good set of ranches. He can't say wrenches. He's I got a good I got a good tool set of ranches. He has a pig ranch, a horse ranch, uh, you know, and a turkey ranch, and they look like that. The heads of them look like that. But his most famous tool is his monkey ranch. And I mean, <laughs> they are characters. They speak. They talk. I mean, it's just it's going to be a remarkably fun place. And the in, the innovative things that have been created over four decades are remarkable. And I love what John said. This needs to be available for every child. It will be, John. It will be yes. uh, definitely not the last we've heard of this, uh, especially according to that text. I want to bring well, this just, up. I'm back. working. Yeah. And, and Avi, the thing yeah. now is I'm working on the funds that are needed. To make this a reality, I have, you know, and people don't know what I've done, you know, but it's done now and it's reality. And I'm working on the funds that are needed to make this. I have a nonprofit corporation and we're working on that and funds have come in, but we need some more. And so we can get this thing done. If I can prevail upon you for a moment, uh, one of the worst things in the world is ending a sentence with a preposition. I'll get into that later. But uh, I want to say this to you. Go ahead, go ahead Mr. Lucas. Sorry. I'm sorry. No. Go ahead. I want I wanted to let you know this that uh, what I said earlier to study history is to study change because it gives us the tool to analyze and explain problems in the past, but it also positions us to see patterns that might otherwise be invisible in the present. And that's what you did tonight. You gave us tools that we might otherwise deem obsolete or might be invisible here in the present, in the right now. But you provided that for us. And that I think provides everyone a crucial perspective for understanding everything you brought to the table tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe the next time I'm on, I can show you some visuals of things. I'd love to. That, that, would, that, would, be, that. would be fun. That, might, that would be a lot of fun to show yeah. you some of those things. Without like how question. Like and capitals, et cetera. I mean, there's no way I can put a visual on right now, is there? Uh, you could send it to me and I can. And, and no, I do like okay. that. We, don't, we won't do it now. We'll do it at another time. You know, and, and it, Absolutely. Because I have literally have tens of thousands of, of drawings. Like when you go down Alphabet Alley, okay, mm -hmm. on, on, the, on the Alphabet Planet, the road lights up as you walk on it or drive on it, and then there are doors. You know, on the left side, you see a big A and a little A on these two doors and a B and a C, et cetera. And then you, they, the, the students will learn, uh, you know, like when, when, when they learn about the letter A, like I said earlier, you, you go into a classroom, you see an apple, ball, a cat, and a dog. It has nothing to do with the sounds A, B, C, D. But I use an ape for, for the letter A. And it's standing with its legs open, and it looks exactly like a big letter A. You know, and the little ape swings on a post, looks like exactly like the little letter A. And they do the teaching. And, and then you open up the doors and go into environments in there where they have incredible fun. Like if you go into the horse hospital, which is yes. the H environment, and there a horse is getting a heart operation. He's lying down getting a heart operation, and he's wearing a helmet with a headlight on it. Everything says HHH. You know, his surgeon is a hippopotamus using a hoe and a hacksaw to work on him. That's all. And, just, you know, they click on them, they hear them, they, cut, they become animated. And so it's just... I mean, it's so many fun things, you know. And then it's you fun, go to, yes. Yeah, yeah. You go to the end, uh, the end, and turn around at Alphabet Alley, where the sound storage stadium is located, where you store all the sounds. Mm -hmm. And from time to time, like when I teach the seven L influence vowels, 
you know, and then the kids see them and they know them. I mean, they know them. They'll never forget them forever because they're visual. I store them in there and then Sourpuss sends the learning blues to steal them. And they, they bring them and put them into the farthest reaches of the universe because Sourpuss is mad because the kids are having fun. Sure. So Dr. Memory has created what's called the sound saver game. He sends the students out in their, in their spaceships and they're going to hear certain sounds and boom. You know, they'll never see an individual sound by itself because they have to make a choice. So they'll, you know, click save the, you know, whatever sound we ask them to save. So they bring it into their spaceship, bring it back and put it into the sound storage stadium so it can be used. in the future. So that they, those kind of games that they play, you know, I, I have a game that my grandchildren love that I developed called the box ox game. I won't go into what it is, but man, my grandchildren went crazy over that. So the kids are going to have an incredible amount of fun learning like they've never had before. Chad is asking, and so is Dakota, where do I invest? And Chad says, where can I make donations? Where can donations be made? Well, they, I, they can go to Ohio, O-H-I-O dot team. And, and, and for instance, let me, let me show you, if I can, something that's on this shirt I'm wearing. Okay, you, you can see this a little bit. That's Archie Griffin and me. Archie Griffin is the only two-time Heisman Trophy winner, and he's the most famous football player from Ohio State, and I'm the most famous basketball player. We're both forming a letter O above our heads. I'm a foot taller than Archie, so my O is a high O compared so to his. So it's Ohio. You know? That's clever. so clever. That's so, so clever. We are selling these shirts to raise funds for my educational website, but there's also a place on there where you can donate money. If you think that what I'm doing is worthwhile and it's a nonprofit corporation, you'll get a deduction from your tax uh, from your taxes. So it is Ohio dot team, not Ohio right dot com or anything else. Right there, Ohio dot team, which where you can go learn about these shirts. And if you're interested and you think what I'm doing is worthwhile, uh, there is a donate button where you can donate money to what we're doing. Guys, please do that if you can. Uh, this is an amazing cause. Uh, children, they're not just our future. They're our present. They're right here. They're with us right now. So please go to Ohio.team where you can make a donation. Uh, we love having you as a large audience, but we love having the quality of people here that comment. So please take your time and do so. Uh, it would mean a lot to me personally as well. I'm sure for Giselle also. Uh, I do see that the Ohio.team uh, link over there is trying to cut my beard off. What's up with that? I don't really know what that's going on there. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, maybe, you need, maybe you need a trim, Ollie. <laughs> I need a trim. I need a trim. Mr. Hey, you Lucas, said earlier, you said earlier yeah. about in, ending, ending a sentence in a preposition. I have a yes, friend sir. I grew up with. He's a good old boy, too. You know, His name is right. J.B. Deaton, and I've known him for 70 years. And every time he calls me, he says, jury, he calls me jury. Jury, where are you at? You know, and I always tell him I'm a boy <laughs> He will not stop saying it. He says it every time. I talk to him on the phone. And I talk to him on the phone two or three times every day. He's a dear friend of mine. I just love him. Uh, this is great from Dakota. Jerry, you are amazing and you are changing the world. Phenomenal. 70 years is awesome. Having a good time here with some laughs. We're learning, guys and gals, having a good time. That's what it's all about. Uh, thanks for posting this on screen, Avi. Hope this gets you lots of donations. Absolutely. Thank you, Chad, as well. Uh, Mr. Uh, Lucas, I have to bring this up because. Celebrity tournament round number two begins in a few months. I have to ask you the magic question. You heard some of the luminaries in the intro from the heart go, I want to win this whole thing because there's nothing wrong with good old fashioned positive competition. You know about that, my friend. You think you're going to win this thing or do you want to win this entire thing? Well, I, I do love the opportunity and I do love people. I wish everybody well. I really do. Somebody's going to be a winner and I'm sure they will deserve it. And I will applaud them, whoever it might be. It might be me, but whoever it is, I guarantee you I will applaud them. I love that. Guys and gals, please uh, give, give as much as you can to Mr. Lucas. I know that I'm going to talk to you soon next week. Thank you for joining us, good sir. Congrats for being in round number two. And thank you for being who you are and what you emphasize, my friend. Thank you so very much. Love you all. Have a great day. Have a great week. Jerry Lucas, tomorrow. guys and gals. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, Kelly White, I'm going to bring you in and Howard as well. And then we're going to talk to Mindy later and also Julie, who's backstage. Uh, but before I do, Giselle. Yes. I mean, blown away, huh? <laughs> Two nerdy, nerdy educators like us listening to Jerry Lucas to me is it's like it's like a party of all parties. He's got so many components of learning built into this website. He says the kids can make their own spaceship. So they're learning building skills along with the literacy components. And it's 
amazing how well thought out this is. Every single character he mentioned makes so much sense in my head. This also helps listening comprehension, if you noticed as well, right? Because the sounds, first of all, they're fun. They're a lot of fun. And I love the fact that, like you said, they're visual, Mm -hmm. but there's a storytelling component to this as well, which makes it intriguing because the best way to convince a child to learn is to make sure they realize that they're doing anything but. And sometimes they might be rebellious when they find out they have learned, but they are through this system. And I think it's amazing. Jerry is so amazing. Uh, let's talk about, before I bring Howard and Kelly in, what are your thoughts about this match? And I have, I'm have i saying this live here. Oh. Lou Ferrigno insisted on being here tonight despite having an incredibly important speech. Incredibly important. And then Bronson Pinchot, you heard him from his mouth as well. Mm-hmm. These two men showed up because they wanted to be here tonight. One watched a few episodes and said, I'm in. Did not want to wait. The other knew about the topics and Mm -hmm. the participants and said, I'm in. I don't want to wait. And I love that. There's an innocence about that. There's a purity about that. But it's also pretty cool to know that not only are people watching, people want to participate and people are coming. It's pretty cool to know that it all comes full circle to what Jerry Lucas said. We can have fun and learn at the same time. And that's what this show is all about. We can, and we have been doing that since April. And part of that is the topic. April. With... <laughs> well, back to December, if we start with the great debate. Yeah. <laughs> when it was first conceptualized, conceptualized about a year ago. <laughs> oh, yes. But the, the grand debate, or as we, when we first started, it was the grand debate. Now we're in the celebrity tournament. As that was conceived and began in April, it's been one amazing ride. The topics you create each week, the fact that they are all different every week, and there's at minimum three topics each week. Because on average, we have had three competitors for the past year, <laughs> every week here on the green room. And people are knocking on the door and ringing the bell and calling the phone because they see what is so special about this tournament and this place because this is a place where we can show not only what we know but who we are and we can do it in a way that's personable and relatable and gets everyone on your side how many times have we seen the viewers and the voters say this is tough i don't know who to vote for i have to flip a coin because one thing that the first competitor says will resonate with you, but something else from the second competitor does too. And how do you weight that? And how do you decide who backed up their argument better, especially with the third topics, these philosophical questions, which become so personal. And we learn so much about each competitor as they come in, about their previous lives, what they love, what they're passionate about. So much more than... Oh, yes, he scored X amount of points in this game and is the leading scorer. We can look that up. Yeah, that stuff, like I said, is attainable. Mm -hmm. Uh, What isn't attainable is a person's heart and soul and how willing they are to go into those depths, those places. And uh, it boils down to trust. Somebody asked me the other day, how do you bring all these people on? And maybe it's the feistiness in me that responded with, how do they get me on? Mm. because they're on this show and I'm very picky with who I bring on the best way. And this message is for someone who I mentioned this too. the best way to make connections is to not try to make any, the best way to make connections is to allow yourself to connect with human beings. Hence the term human connection, connect with people. What? Because they're a celebrity. They don't want that. Maybe they're lonelier than someone who isn't considered a celebrity or a luminary. Maybe they're tired of being asked for autographs. Maybe they're tired of being asked how their favorite show was. Because, yeah, it's their body of work that we compliment. But sometimes people want to be heard and want to be noticed. And certainly their characters are, right? We're thinking about characters that are iconic, immortalized. But it's the human being that wants that connection. And 
this isn't so oh, me and all that, but it, you know, 20 years working with these luminaries, it's uh, I've seen a lot of writers fail at being personable because they don't want to simply say, Hey man, what'd you think about that game last night? Hey man, what'd you think about that movie? And it's through something that might be general or water cooler that we get to know the human being. And if I could have somehow caught lightning in a bottle and be able to showcase that here, I would have considered that a win. And because we've done that, it is a win. So, yeah, we want this thing greenlit. Yeah, people are talking to us. Yeah, we know. We know what's happening. Mm -hmm. And the people, we have we know all that. But what we also know is that regardless of whether this stays on Facebook and YouTube or doesn't, we can be proud of ourselves because we are putting good out into the world. You know, there's a lot of people who sit down and probably pick apart those who are doing because they mm -hmm. can't do. Right? They wait for your missteps. Right. They wait for you to fall. Right. It's because they can't. I've always said the same thing. As human beings, we're all climbing the same mountain. Some of us have the endurance, preparation, and the experience to climb said mountain. And those that don't, sometimes go back. They go back to a place where they can work out and train mentally and physically and climb that mountain again. But then there are those that don't want that. There are those that said, you know what? We fell off this mountain. There are some people over there that are still climbing it. Why? Why should they be able to reach the summit. Hmm. Maybe I could grab what's around. Oh, there's a stone. There's a pebble. Let me chuck it at them. And that's what we see. And that's what we see sometimes. And that's what human beings will see. But you know what I love? I love that our backpacks are so huge. They're filled with all this equipment. I like that we have the right equipment. I like that a stone or a rock can't penetrate us. Because we're climbing we are climbing and we're climbing for something that's worthwhile. We're climbing for something yes. knowing that when we reach the summit and we scream atop the mountain, it could be something that's worth hearing and absorbing from us. Because when we scream, look at us, look at TKN, what we're really screaming is, let's get together. Let's do this and what we did tonight. Let's learn and love and listen to three L's. Let's do it. And there's nothing... It's nothing I care about more than bringing people together. It's it's who I am. That's that's me, and that's you, and that's Kelly White, and that's Mindy, and that's Howard, and it's Julie, and it's Pete, and it's Fred, and it's Pagan, and it's Joe Rosatano, and it's Phil, and it's it's my pleasure to have gotten to know all you guys. I don't consider this to be pressure. Because I've got beautiful people that care about me and beautiful people I care about. And we're doing something pretty positive together. So if through this idea or concept, it gave us an excuse to get to know each other. Damn, we're winners already. Kelly White, Howard Collado. <laughs> Man. Absolutely. Uh, I could not agree with that more. I, uh, really quick, I just want to say again, um, amazing, amazing work, Mr. Klein. I know how difficult this week was and uh, being able to put these amazing human beings in front of us today. Um, it's really a feat and uh, I'm grateful to be here and Kelly, amazing judging and Giselle, great uh, back and forth with uh, our guest here. So yeah, oh, man. Don't know where to start, though. <laughs> Don't um, know where to start. I mean, I, I, every time I'm here, you know, I say it, it gets harder every time, but I'm, I'm not really exaggerating that. I don't know if it's just the mesh of who Avi's able to bring in, coupled with the topics. Yeah. But, you know, it's like these three guys, you know, they, they laid it out. There, there were no missteps. There was no lacking. It's like, you know, judging, you know, this this pile of gold versus this pile of gold. Which pile of gold yeah. is better? Yeah. And, and, and it's all gold, right? right. Yeah. Well, I think part of that is because so many people have seen what we're doing now and they want to be a part of it. As Avi mentioned, two of the gentlemen who competed tonight did not want to wait, even though they had prior engagements on their calendar. Yeah. They want so much to be involved with this that they prepare the topics. They do their research. They come with their points lined out 
in an organized and understandable manner that we can relate to. And every single one of them is doing that. So it makes it more difficult for us to judge what they're saying, especially if we're getting into something more abstract or esoteric, where it could go off in so many different directions. And so how does the judge interpret the question as well as how do the competitors interpret the question? Yeah, I, I, I do not envy your position, Kelly, uh, tonight, because I think what we see is uh, these guys prepare, you know, they give you, you know, for lack of a better phrase, empirical data of what they mm -hmm. are uh, bringing, right, and in terms of what uh, the point uh, to support their point, but then they're also bringing the personal. So I think what we see is that intermingling between, you know, fact and something that's also coming from the heart. And that is... I think it's such a, a beautifully lethal combination when it's done with um, just integrity and honesty. You know, um, it, it definitely is. And I think if we look back to, you know, as Giselle pointed out, when this was conceptualized and started running, even in the beginning of, you know, the beginning of round one, this has evolved from what's, you know, purely a contest. I mean, myself and Marcus Bagwell is a prime example. You know, I came in, I, I was very well prepared, had my facts in a row, I had my arguments down. Uh, and he actually came in and, and just brought some depth and heart to it. And, yeah. you know, it, it was a fight. And I think, you know, not I don't say that catalyzed it. But since then, I've seen more and more of that where all the competitors, you know, sometimes ourselves, a lot of times it's been the celebrities they're they're going deep it's not so much about you know in 1963 this happens it it's this happened to me i saw this i experienced this yeah. yes. and you know here was the effect mm -hmm. and that just makes it so difficult tonight you know what really guided me was my personal experiences Mm. Uh, because I connected with Lou on a couple of his, and I connected with Bronson, uh, you know, especially the first topic. I've actually been to uh, one of the main death camps in Germany when I was in the military. And, you know, just him talking about how this film affected him. I mean, they had pictures on the wall of how, you know, the, the liberators found people. Uh, mm. You know, and I'm sure you saw it in the film. We saw pictures of people laying on mattress springs. They laid there so long, their skin had grown around the springs. They had to be ripped off. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, you know, just, you know, something that really just, just, just hit with me. And I had to let it guide my voting because everybody was presenting such a good point in argument. Yeah, I mean, uh, so much of what you're embodying, Kelly, in a sense, is to, to thou own self be true, right? You're yeah. kind of just following your own conviction. Um, I think what also spoke to me is that beautiful moment that Bronson uh, talked about when he was at the gym. And, uh, you know, nothing beats that experience, that kind of uh, that emotional experience of, of, of looking at a child's smile in comparison to, you know, scrolling through, you know, uh, social media. And, and, and But even more so importantly is 15 how that's even more significant uh, than it was 15 years ago because yeah. we're so bombarded. Um, amazing panel, Avi. Congratulations. Absolutely. One, Absolutely. You know, at the risk of sounding superficial, one of our biggest panels, I mean, you know, Bronson Pinchot, people <sighs> will remember him as Balky. I mean, yeah. God, much more than that. I mean, God almighty, the stage work alone is incredible. Uh, a bevy of awards in the world of stage, audio books too, film, television. Uh, certainly the lead role on a 80s sitcom for almost 10 yeah. years. Not many of those, yeah. not many comedies yeah. that went a decade. Yeah. And it was a hit. It was a huge hit. And then you go to Lou Ferrigno and you say, wow, okay, so this guy had successful careers in both bodybuilding and film and television? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. And had to do so by overcoming the odds that he did? Yeah. I want to say this again. This is a man that his family, when he was a child, could not afford two different hearing aids. Mm. He had one and he'd have to rotate them every six months yeah, because financial difficulties. And up until the age of 20, that's what he did. Ow. And this was a man that was bullied and ostracized. He was very thin. Bronson was the opposite. Full figure. Two people yeah. who overcame a lot. Also, Bronson came from poverty. 
And I just felt like there was a story that would speak to everybody and while they're listening to one another. So my challenge was, how the hell do I change these topics last minute? <laughs> <laughs> I am sure that was a challenge. Yep. But, uh, you, 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 you did good, bub. I appreciate uh, that, yeah. brother. And so yeah, do you. Yeah. I mean, you did good. I couldn't do what you did. I could have judged. <laughs> How the hell do you judge? Maybe maybe this is kind of cool that uh, since we're talking, guys, this is living room style too. Maybe it's cool that you didn't have a lot of time to vote because it's like the more you'll be in your own head, it would be oh, tough yeah. to get a vote oh, out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I would end up doing so the Cabrera. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, guys, thank you again. Uh, Howard Collado, guys, is going to – we're going to talk with Howard and Giselle momentarily, but I want to talk to Kelly for a moment, one-on-one, -on -one, if you guys don't mind. Uh, guys, there's more show to go. Thank you, Giselle. What a great conversation she had with Jerry Lucas. Um, oh, yeah. Man, before we delve into something, guys, that we were going to consider an announcement here exclusively on the green room, what were your thoughts on Jerry? Um, I think, I mean, Jerry is, wow, uh, just so passionate about his, I mean, you know, we've had a lot of people on here that, you know, they've had a life's work in a field, whether it's pro wrestling, uh, storytelling, singing. But he made his own life's work. It wasn't something he elected into. He took it and made it himself and has pursued it for, what, 50 years? I mean, it's just mind-boggling to think about that a guy took this, this want, saw a need, took a want, and has developed it over the course of half a century to where it's really knocking on the door of possibly reigniting the the high potential of true education that has been lacking for at least 25 years. <laughs> so really post post match that spoke to you as well. Yes. Yes, it did. Um, and, you know, I, I was talking to, you know, Giselle and Howard about this and I know I didn't vote for Jerry and it's because the voting was so difficult and Bronson's one story and then Lou's were what really connected to me. Um, I think Jerry's whole outline and everything was wonderful. I think he made good points, but it was just, it didn't quite connect to me the way those guys did, but I do applaud him. I hope everybody goes to Ohio dot team and, you know, throw, throw some, uh, you know, love his way to get this thing rolling. What, what do you think was so challenging for you as a judge though? Because you brought up some of the points, but was it because you were able to personalize through those points or do you feel like, they were just really smooth with presenting all of their points. I think they were just all extremely smooth. Um, you know, Bronson had a particular way he went about it that, you know, at first maybe didn't seem smooth, but man, he, he could dig down and hit points and bring up, you know, just these little tidbits that made you go, wow. I think Jerry was the smoothest of all, but Lou sure didn't lack anything. And like I told them, I had to rely on my personal connection to do the judging. They were, you know, just coming in blind, if I had no personal connection, it had been, okay, let's toss a coin. <laughs> I gotta, you know, give me a three-headed coin. We'll see what we do. Well, so was this the toughest one to judge? Yes. You know, it's weird. I say every time I show up, they get tougher and tougher every time. <laughs> they do. I but this is the epitome of that. If you make them any tougher, I'm, I may have to bow out, dude. <laughs> Guys and gals, and you're in round number two as well, so this is not exactly easy pickings. Huh? Which one of those three would you not want to face, I'd say? Um, wow. That's that's a tough one there, too. I'm saying if, if I had to avoid one, it would probably be Lou. He has a way of just connecting uh, with people on such a natural and deep level that's going to be hard for anybody to overcome if they're up against him. Yeah. And guys, we see just here, this just in bodybuilding legend and the incredible Hulk himself, Lou Ferrigno, Emmy nominee and star of perfect strangers, Bronson Pinchot, and one of the best of all time, Jerry Lucas, all advanced to round number two. Yep. Uh, whoever thought, do we, you know, again, pretty cool seeing the incredible Hulk. Pretty awesome. Uh, it is. I, I was a huge fan of that show growing up. Uh, and one of the connections with Lou, uh, my mom was a big, she, she got TV guy. I don't even know if they make it anymore. Probably <laughs> not. But it was a magazine. I think it was weekly. And that's one thing she made sure she got. She had a subscription. 
Uh, and when she was done with them, I got to leave through them, you know, not for the programs, but they had articles in them. And I can't remember if Lou wrote it or it was an interview, oh. but he went over how he was, you know, a, basically a 90 pound weakling, uh, you know, was bullied and picked on, you know, because of, you know, the way he talked due to the hearing loss and how he got into bodybuilding and the start with Joe Weider and Arnold Schwarzenegger and all that. And that story stuck with me. Uh, you know, I was what, 11, 12, maybe when I read that. Incredible. Uh, Joe Weider has been a hero to many, many bodybuilders. Oh, yeah. I talked talk to Lou before the show, and I told him about – he was talking about how someone in the gym was not necessarily receptive to some ideas. And it reminded me of, like, what – there was a friend of mine who was in incredible shape, but he always plateau. And I, would, I just wanted to bring this up in front of Lou. I'm like, you know, I told him, man, you're doing the same exercises. You're plateauing. What about range of motion? Something as simple as range of motion. You don't have to change your whole program. But you'd be surprised at how a person won't plateau in the gym if they just, again, simple change in range of motion can do the, can do the trick. Uh, a lot of people that maybe are doing are curling for two months, well, switch it up. Maybe you want to do concentrated curls in reverse bicep curls. Maybe yeah. instead of doing lunges, you do reverse weighted lunges. I mean, there's so many different things you can do. And he's such a fountain of information. Uh, I loved the green room conversation we all had. That's almost a show that I wish we could record it too. Right. But, um, I, I do not think that Lou Ferrigno is an underdog when it comes to this. I think he's a great speaker. I no, think absolutely agree. Oh, my gosh. I think he speaks from passion, intellect, knowledge. Um, man, Kelly White, speaking of intellect and knowledge, it's great to know that we can continue to just surprise people the way we do mm -hmm. with some of your knowledge. Because, guys and gals and pals, if you're looking for us to slice and dice our way, we'll do so. <laughs> Might happen on Wednesdays from now on, starting the new year. Absolutely. Might be learned some lines, guys and gals. Kelly White and I are still gonna still gonna team up during this whole thing. We know that. Oh yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Hasn't hasn't exactly us. Uh, we haven't prevented ourselves from thinking about that, but we're thinking about the present right now, guys and gals, and that's why it's a gift. So let's talk about the right now, the immediate. Without giving too much away, Mister White, there is going to be another show on this network, and it's going to allow the masses to know. Why Kelly White, the Jay Silent guys, in case you need to know, they'll allow them to know why you are not just a one-trick pony, why you are a renaissance man, and why there is something that speaks to you that speaks to me, that will speak to everybody else. What new show are we talking about? What is the main theme of this show, Kelly? The main theme of the show is a little thing called D&D, &D, or if you prefer, Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. That's right. You guys, you heard it first. Dungeons and Dragons. We're going to tell you what that means. But Kelly, they're probably thinking, wait a minute. That's a game. That's an in-person game. You, how, how are we going to do it here virtually? Well, um, if you want a little history lesson on the virtuality of Dungeons and Dragons, we just have to go back to 2019 where COVID basically uh, changed the face of the gaming world. I mean, we were masked up. We were stuck in our houses. Some places we were stuck without jobs. We weren't driving. Uh, but gamers will persevere. And Zoom, StreamYard, uh, Face, uh, you know, just any, any kind of avenue where we can be together on screen as Avi and I are right now is a viable way to do it. It's communication. We're still face to face. We're just not sitting at the same table. Uh, you know, the only thing I say, there's probably a little more trust goes into it. I can't see Avi's die roll, so I hope he won't cheat. <laughs> <laughs> now, again, there are different roles uh, that are established in this game. You are a DM, a dungeon master. Uh, you've had many uh, campaigns. When yep. did you first start playing d, &D? I first started, uh, it, it's an odd story. Um, yep. I heard it referenced, you know, and this was back a uh, little history lesson when the, uh, what was called the satanic panic. Oh, 80s, uh, 80s. And there were a group of parents that totally misunderstood the game. Uh, and they were like, Oh, it's, you know, it's evil. It's all this. Um, so that, you know, that's a draw for a kid. Oh, wow. This is cool. Ooh. Parents don't like it. So it's great. <laughs> um, and we just had this kid on the bus, uh, and I was from, you know, down in the holler, as we say in West Virginia. Yep. And he was a city boy that moved there and he showed up with these three weird looking books, kind of told us how the game was played, brought some dice and we didn't do anything at all correctly, but we had some fun. 
Uh, that was in 1982. In 1986, when I joined the Army, I ran into some guys that played this stuff for real, uh, learned all about it, just fell in love with it. And it has been a huge part of my life ever since. Uh, it's been a huge part of many, many people's lives that I've met. You know, I've, I don't know how many friends I've made just from gaming. And it's not like they sat at my table or I sat there. We bumped into each other, grocery store, gas station, a bar, a game shop. And, you know, we just stumbled upon the fact we both played. And hours of conversation ensued. And we're friends. It's amazing storytelling. It's amazing. It is, it, it is storytelling at its very core. Yeah, yeah. Because as a dungeon master, I set a scene. Now I know what certain actions will lead to next, but the group of players don't, but they have to make the decision on what actions they're going to take. The and sometimes nice you have is, to make a U-turn also. Ab ab absolutely. It yeah. happens. Yeah. The very nice thing about this is that a couple of guys, a guy named Gary Gygax uh, and another guy named Dave Arneson, right. created a set of rules they adapted for miniature wargaming uh, to kind of let us all do this fairly above board. It's not like you describe what you do and I simply say, well, that didn't work. There are some die rolls involved that we, we test fate and chance yes. with everything we do. Uh and that makes the game unpredictable. You know, I can think, hey, you know, they should easily defeat whatever this is and move on. Some bad die rolls, and suddenly it doesn't go so well. And it could, it could even be a situation where perhaps uh, two participants turn on each other during a campaign. That can happen. That can happen. Uh, disagreements uh, between characters. You've seen us do blurring the lines. This is where... Someone like Avi or one of our other players that he may mention uh, or, or allude to uh, creates a character within this framework. Uh, it could be anything from a dwarven fighter to an elven cleric to uh, a, a halfling rogue. Uh, and there's, you know, certain uh, certain backgrounds. What about Bartholomew? What about Bartholomew the Barbarian? Bartholomew the Barbarian could be very interesting. Um, there was actually, <laughs> there was actually, he wasn't quite a barbarian. Uh, he was a fighter, but, uh, he was in one of, uh, Douglas Niles novels, uh, where he left the world of combat and became an aesthetic monk, basically not, not the, mm. not the karate type monk, but purely, uh, you know, a man of learning. But then as stories go is roughly dragged back into the violence he previously knew. So it's such a great game with a rich history. Yeah, and, and you know, you talked about the Satanic Panic in the 80s. Of mm -hmm. course, uh, that was not exclusive to Dungeons & Dragons and role-playing games, but also music, yeah. we all know. Yeah. Uh, uh, there was that Ozzy Osbourne song, The Suicide Solution. Uh, there was that Tom Hanks movie, Mazes and Monsters. If you haven't seen Lone it, don't. Uh, yeah, that yeah, was... Uh, it was that actually was a little... story based on a true Dallas. I forget his name, Dallas. Um, oh God, I can his name but he played in sort of in the catacombs of a cave this mm -hmm. this child had mental health issues he was a college yeah. student he was a youngin and uh they blamed the game of course on on D, &D. they blamed the incident on D, &D. uh yeah. but guys really the game keeps getting stronger keeps evolving what without giving too much away what's going to make this particular campaign so interesting mr white well um the big thing is it's uh it's who's going to be at the virtual table. Uh, they're going to be familiar faces from the green room from the celebrity tournament. So think of some of the celebrities that you've seen, some of the more recent and some of the maybe better well-known. They're going to be sitting down developing a character, playing this game, and... Uh, and like I said, it's a it's an, a game of innate storytelling. The story unfolds as the game plays. Also, much like our tournament, these people are going to have some conversations. They're they're going to have to make decisions as a group to overcome obstacles, whether it's fighting a monster, defeating a trap, just navigating a, a cave system. A very diverse set of people that we all, you know, admire to some capacity typically are going to sit down and do this and they want to do this. They want to do it. They want to do it. Guys, this was an idea that I probably 
started conceptualizing back in August, September. Kelly, of course, is going to be the man who takes this to another level. Um, but the cool thing about this campaign, well, first of all, there's examples of this being done. Uh, we all know that Vin Diesel is a big D&D player. Mm -hmm. We know that. Uh, there's a lot of great celebrities who play this game. That means the TKN Celebrity Tournament and the TKN Network as a whole has a lot of celebrities that have already committed to playing this game, which means you will be watching. You'll be in your living room. You'll be watching Kelly White campaigning, playing this game of D&D, &D, not just with um, his friends and fellow, fellow. Uh, I guess I could call them lifers, because once you play a game, you're a lifer. No, yeah. he's going to be playing with celebrities who are lifers, who haven't played mm -hmm. the game in a while. That's going to be pretty cool. Celebrity D&D. &D. Tracy Mitchell says, you got to watch the show every Saturday night. Thank you so much. Vin Diesel. Is that a clue? I don't know. I'm just letting you know he plays D&D. &D. <laughs> well, it, if he hears about the broad. game, it could be. <laughs> could be. He might want to play. I've been seeing a lot more famous people getting into role playing. You want you want to address that there, Kelly, from our own? Uh, absolutely. Uh, we're in the fifth edition of what Gary and Dave developed back in the early 70s. Uh, and for whatever reason, just this iteration of the game made it so popular it kind of took away from the need to be a highly intelligent person to play it. That used to be something that was rather necessary back in the day. It's no longer necessary. More people can have fun and it's still a cerebral top, uh, style of fun. But uh, as, as Avi mentioned, Vin Diesel, he actually did uh, the, uh, the dedication for third edition in the actual player's handbook. Uh, Paul White, better known as the Big Show from WWE, uh, is a big, uh, big gamer. Uh, Joe Manganiello, I always mess his name up. Uh, pretty much whatever people know him. Oh, you uh, mean the guy that Sofia Vergara dumped? Yeah, she that guy. Watching, she started watching the green room religiously and saw this mug. Well, that could have been it. It could have been the fact that when they bought the house in LA, he didn't let her keep the downstairs as her wine room and turned it into his personal Dungeons and Dragons gaming area with a huge red dragon head behind it. Uh, you know, some people that showed up, Vince Vaughn, uh, was, yes. was always over there. Uh, he's Vince a big Vaughn. gamer. Lisa Marie Presley actually told Nicolas Cage, sell your comic book collection when they were married. And he had like the coolest Nicolas Cage had, there's a story. Nicolas Cage had action comics. Number one, which, uh, the first appearance of Superman, one of the most valuable, if not the most sought after comic book ever true story. He had this party. Yeah. Nicolas Cage had this like dinner party. And he was kind of taking people through different rooms and, of course, enter the comic book room. Uh, I don't know why he left people in that room, because I wouldn't have, but he no. did. And about four hours later, when people were departing and he was bidding everyone adieu, he didn't get a chance to bid Action Comics number one adieu because it left his <laughs> humble abode because somebody stole it. And there was this big investigation. You can look this up. And, like, they finally found it. It was like they tried. I think the person who stole it tried to restore it, whatever they did. But either way, he found it again. Uh, and yeah, Lisa Marie was like, you got to get rid of your comics. Uh, and he sadly, he did. Sadly, he kind of like yeah. sold a bunch of them and Ooh. she still left them. Yeah, so I know. Like, Wait a minute. I gave him my comics and you're still leaving me. <laughs> what? Come on. Literally. So wow. I, I don't know, man. I there's there's a lot of the great. The point of all this, not that there always has to be one in the living room conversation, but the point of all this is that, you know, we don't know what interests people like we didn't know about Lou Ferrigno's story. We didn't know about Bronson's story. We didn't know that Kelly White is such a D&D &D aficionado and also someone who's very passionate about the game because, Absolutely. let's be honest, anything that relieves stress today, A-OK -okay for me. That's what D&D &D does at the end of the day, Mr. White. It does. Um, real quick story on that. A guy that I play with, and yep. uh, we've known each other for years, and I was talking about my home game, and you know, he's like, yeah, you know, I'd like to play sometime. I never really invited him. And one day, literally, he goes, you guys playing tonight? I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, I got to throw some dice. I'll be over. He invited himself. <laughs> now, I love the dude. He's been here ever since. Uh, but, you know, it, it gets to that point sometimes, you know, with certain people. They need to play so bad, they're going to invite themselves. <laughs> Kelly, you uh, like, guys. Well, hold on. So I'm going to ask you a question here as well because this is very interesting to me. Would – are you going to treat – of course, I feel like I know the answer. Are you going to treat the celebrities any differently than you would any other player? Absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, this is, you know, the game table's like Vegas, you know, to a degree. It's not necessarily what stay, what happens there stays there, but every, everybody's a gamer at the game table regardless. What if of one of them the says, table. I've got an autographed Mr. Sacco I can send you away? 
contemplating. We'll, 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 we'll think about that. <laughs> we'll cross <laughs> that bridge. <laughs> but guys, you're in good hands with Mr. White. And remember, what does that mean as far as the second half of the green room? Here's what it means. If blurring of the lines will be on Wednesdays, because that might be the case. It might be on Friday nights. It might be on Saturday nights. Probably on Wednesdays uh, on the Black Box exclusively, which will be airing, guys, on Wednesdays, not just on Joe Rizart's page after the new year. My page, Kelly's page. We'll try to get as many admins to uh, uh, make sure they air it as well. Our YouTube channel. There's a lot of big things. I'm going to talk about this with Julie. Julie and I will be very vague about the behind-the-scenes activities that are taking place. So she and I can talk about that. But uh, right here, for those of us in the backstage area, look at that little bubble. You see that big number I was telling you about, Kelly, right there? Uh, that means, I don't know if you see that there, but um, it means that we're doing some pretty cool things right now in YouTube land as well. Uh, we are doing a lot right now, guys. This year was all about, for me, making mistakes, brand awareness, and, of course, uh, making sure we have the right team. Check, check, check. Took a while. We feel very good uh, making sure that 2023 is behind us pretty soon. Because when 2023 began, maybe Kelly remembers. I know Jerry Lucas would with his memory. He remembers everything. But yeah. uh, I did I did say in 2023 when we started this year, we're not going to quote-unquote make it. We're, we're, we're going to develop strategy. We're going to fall. We're going to get up. I didn't know what it would look like or what that would mean. But it's not as if like it was something I am saying now at the end of the year. I said at the beginning of the year because this is a marathon. Some people are built for it. Some people are not to each their own. But uh, we do know that 2024 is a year we're looking forward to. I, I said this back in 2022. Howard, you can attest to this. I, I said 2024, if, we if our ducks are lined up in a row, that could be an interesting year for us. That's all I said. It could be a very interesting year for TKN. I believe it will. We're continuing to grow. You got to give a hand to Kelly White and Mindy and Giselle and Julie and Howard. Uh, they're posting with passion. They're letting you know every day. They don't. There's no days off for these guys and gals. None. They're here every day. John Red, every every one of them. Um, so yes, the black box will be the home most likely of blurring of the lines, which means all the great storytelling you love will still be there for you every week. We'll be there for you every week. And we also might have a pre-show, we might have a post-show. Uh, there's a lot of things we're going to be doing. Uh, but as of course, D and D, where will that air? We'll let you know. What we are going to let you know as well is that of all the 70 plus talk shows that we have, I've been alluding to this. They're all going to air on YouTube live very soon. And that means all of you, I know Kelly's pumped too, can interact oh, yeah. with us live. That means in details, the next episode, which is pre-recorded, will be available on the network. But the next episode will be live on YouTube. We're going to rotate it out. One episode of each show, whether co-hosted by Luminary or Green Rumor, one of these shows will be live. The next will be pre-recorded. Live, pre-recorded. It means that you'll have a bevy of opportunities to interact with the celebrities that have their own show, comment, like, subscribe, which is free on our YouTube channels. Please do that. But more importantly, you can actually ask questions and be involved in the live show. So that's pretty exciting, Kelly. Absolutely, it is. Uh, and, you know, that's that's the thing with, uh, you know, what we do and, you know, some of the other existing uh, Dungeons and Dragons uh, things out there is you can ask questions. You you know, it's it's live. It's right there. Yeah. So, uh you know, I'm going to start pumping this thing up a little myself. Yes, uh, I'm actually very networked in the uh, Dungeons and Dragons community. So I'm going to start letting people know that we got something going on that's going to be worth seeing. Definitely worth seeing. It's it's good storytelling. It's great storytelling. And I, I feel safe in the hands of Kelly White, who's been doing this for a long time, very well at a high level. Uh, guys, let's bring in Giselle. Let's bring in Howard. I will then bring in Julie and John and Mindy separately, but let's bring in Howard Collado over here. Howard, you said in uh, about 10 words or less, my friend, because I want to play something, but you said you're very interested in seeing how this develops as well. I'm, I'm super fascinated. Uh, you sold me, Kelly, on Dungeons and Dragons, and because essentially it's storytelling, right? It is. And uh, storytelling, problem solving, and strategy. And yeah, you don't need to give me more than that to sell me on something. So but you know who does need to give me more? Because I'm like Seymour, or I should say I'm that plant that needs Seymour to feed me. I need this man, the following individual, I need him to feed me. I don't need him to feed me some protein. I already got that in my in my uh, house over here and left. And right over here, turn this protein. <laughs> what I need is a healthy dose of his top five. Oh, here we go. Yes. Top five here to give you yet another top five. Well, tonight's edition, my top five viewers that have stood out to me well let's get this thing started and go number five is a tag team duo goes out to blake and julie cabinets 
You know, they uh, they come out and they uh, come out strong with a lot of comments, great points, a lot of knowledge in behind them. Great to have you guys in the comment section. Very, very, uh, very awesome job that you guys do each and every work week. Um, number four definitely goes out to my buddy uh, Gus Anselmo. Lifetime uh, viewer since day one, and uh, he sure has a love for TKN. Uh, we know Gus hasn't been around lately due to uh, moving and stuff, and we'd love to have you guys back, Gus. You're top five too, man, so great to have you in your videos back soon. Um, number three, Karen Car Calabretta. Um, you're always in the comment section, great knowledge, you have awesome comments, and you know, anything that we can hold against you would be, well, you're a Buffalo fan, and well, that's just to be said, so... Anyways, you're awesome and we love you, Karen. Um, number two, Brian Code Monkey Burr. Man, you come out hard in the court when it comes out into the comments. You sure know how to put the comments out there, fast and furious. Help build comments section up and uh, help get the records. You know, love the energy and you have a love for TKN just as much as I do, brother. You're awesome to have in the comment section as well. And uh, number one, Julie Hall. Julie, man, there's uh, nothing you haven't done for TKN that we all don't appreciate. Whether it be in the comment section, preview, review, and what you do in chat. Just know you're my number one pick and you certainly deserve it. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's edition of Top 5. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah. We, uh we need to give that guy like a quick maybe 30 second top five chad like intro video oh yeah i mean I, I, you know I'll, I'll be my homework this week there you go okay i'll, I'll, I'll make that out if, if i was okay with that yeah <laughs> it's uh man yeah i love chad That's i love cool. this top five hey, list today top because... five here to give you yet another <laughs> that was right there. That's next week just kidding oh, okay <laughs> Yeah, no, I love this top five today. We my, always my, my index finger gravitates towards anything that says Chad in my video files because I want to listen to this man. I love the way he breaks things down. Uh, Chad's top fives are awesome, but how about this, guys? Breaking it things down in his estimation as far as the, the engine that makes this thing go, the viewers. Mm -hmm. Man, we didn't talk about them enough. We talked about one another. We wouldn't be doing this without everyone typing right now. Am I right? No, absolutely, that's absolutely not. Right. 10%, 110%. Yeah. Um, you know, the momentum, the energy that you guys have in that comment section is just, it's bonkers. It's like, um, it's like a, a family right in there, you know? Well, I mean, you uh, not have gone 167 consecutive episodes yeah. without <laughs> you there watching us every week, yeah. week after week, loyal viewers coming in to vote, wanting to know who's going to be on, making your predictions, getting all of that in. And loving it so much and sharing it with everyone else that you know. And so we appreciate you. We always say you're the engine that makes this thing go because we cannot do this without you. No, absolutely not. I mean, you guys bring the energy that fuels us for what yeah. we do. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, there's so many times where, you know, you're engaged in a segment or something and then you just see a chat comment maybe or some observation <laughs> and it just makes you chuckle and you're trying to bite oh, yeah. it down because you probably can't laugh at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all had those experiences and uh, I love them. I love them because they're watching, they are listening and they are in tune every moment, even when you think they're not. They are yeah. watching every moment and that's, uh, that's a pleasure to have. You know? It absolutely is. Yeah. yeah, seeing the comments come in very quickly, how excited everyone is every week, especially at the start of a show when everyone's, let's go, let's do this, it's going to be a great episode, so excited for tonight. <laughs> that helps pump us up, dare I say, almost as much as the intro. <laughs> maybe, just maybe. Being one for all and all for oh. one is all and good. But sometimes it's good to see people team up. It's good to have an ally. And while the green room has shown us many things regarding alliances, both fractured and mended, I do have to say in round two, I hope a lot of people 
can find alliances amongst each other. Namely, I'd love to see an alliance between Mick Foley and Raven. Of course, the Nasty Boys are going to team up together. Demolition as well. Kid and Play. These are some of my favorite alliances in a tournament that's normally every man for himself or woman for themselves. As I'd love to see Kate team up with Gina. I'd also love to see the London Brothers. Preferably, I'd love to see the London Brothers have a debate together with the aforementioned Nasty Boys. And I think that we could have a very fun rivalry with Kid and Play and Demolition. There are many different ways this can go, but there's only one way to know for sure, and that's to tune in every Saturday night on The Green Room. And I look forward to seeing you all there and being back very soon with more of these fun, unique, interesting, and stylish videos. Thank you all, and have a beautiful night. Awesome. Awesome. First of all, love love what's what's happening here, Gus. That's, oh yeah. That's a oh, that's a new look. Yeah. I yeah. like it. That is amazing. Um alliances, guys. I mean, yeah. wow. What do you think about that? What do you think about that? Well, you know, I'm I'm a fan of alliances. Avi. Yes, you are. As a matter of fact, so am I. There you go. Guys and gals, there's nothing like a good old fashioned alliance, especially when you know that the person that you're allied with is a contender, not a pretender. A man who could make it to the top, not be a flop. Who am I referring to? The obvious, Kelly White. He's all right. <laughs> Kelly White, guys and gals. A guy who's going to, again, what are you going to do? Are you going to part what? What are you going to part? The Red Sea. The Red oh, Sea. Guys oh. and gals. He's going to part that Red Sea for me. And then, spoiler alert. Kelly White and Alvy Klein will be in the finals when this thing is all said and done. That's right. After five or six rounds, the two men that have looked out for one another will be there in the finals. It'll be a human game of chess. This I profess. And Mr. Kelly White, should I win, you get the money anyhow. Because I'm not keeping the prize, guys and gals. I can't keep my own money. So, guys, Kelly White, I'm going to make this announcement already. Kelly White's going to win. A trip for two degrees. Are you already planning that? Is there a time? You know, we're doing a lot here. It's going to be about a year until we're done with this tournament. Is there a particular month that you prefer going to Greece, Kelly? Since you're already going to win. Um, you know, I think I think November. Uh, November. Again, like to nice get away from the holidays, yeah. so actually doing a Thanksgiving in Greece. Uh, yeah, be great. Yeah, you know, might be might be something new. I think that's a great uh, idea, Howard. Howard, what are your thoughts here? I mean, Howard, are you going to be in the bleachers or front row watching Kelly White doing his thing? Hmm. Well. Hey, you know what? I'll give Kelly his props. Articulate guy, passionate guy, really insightful, you know. But this is a competition, right? And uh, why am I in this? Why is Giselle in this? Why is Kelly in this? We're in this to win it, all right? Is this and the comedic portion of the show where you say you're going to win the whole tournament? <laughs> <laughs> is, this, is this the part where you say... <laughs> oh, oh, Kelly White... Mr. White, I'm turning red. <laughs> I see that. I see that. Now, I thought that it's enough to have my microphone match the backdrop, but my face does too now. <laughs> I mean, I'll just throw this this little sucker here as well. That little bandana spread. Uh, Howard Collado, you going to win the whole tournament? Going to give every fiber of my being. I can tell you that. I can tell you that definitely, for sure. Giselle, are you going to tell us next that you're going to win the whole tournament? Of course I'm going to win. Oh. Kelly's going to have to figure out another way to get to Greece because I'm already going to be there. Oh, I see. Well, guys, listen. I was half kidding and half not. Kelly White is going to win this thing, but I do not uh, envy anyone who faces any combination of any green rumor. I've said this on the review show on the black box. If a green rumor should win, be it Howard or Giselle, I'm not surprised. They're not underdogs. They're not. You know why? Because they've been a part of this thing every day. And they're living life and working and hustling and grinding. They want it. 
and you can never substitute that. You can never substitute intellect, experience, and hunger. Uh, we all know the celebrities want to win this too. It's all there in that intro, right? Uh, oh, yeah. my, my, I mean, look at Lou Ferrigno's text that came about 30 minutes ago when I was backstage for a moment before I was on with Kelly White. Uh, he said, look what he wrote. Do you think the audience knows that I want to win? And I yeah. said, what, win the whole tournament? He goes, yeah. Y-E-A-H. I said, yeah. I think you told them. He says, let them know again. And yeah. the word again had caps, which is awesome. Okay. Yeah. So, guys, Lou Ferrigno, you heard what he said. He's not. He's a competitor. He's always here to win and not go second place. Yep. Uh, again, just it's impossible to try to predict who is going to win. Uh, I think you guys would concur, right? At this point, it's like, hey, if we had a list of contenders – it, it would take Einstein, Tesla, and everybody else we know to come up with some sort of formula, and they would fall short, too. They would. And we're not even accounting for those who may end up in the second chance bowl because yeah, so many that. of them lost incredible. or eliminated by one point. So many of these first-round matchups could have been a semifinal. Oh, oh yeah. Kelly White. Get a fan. Kelly White has a fan. Yeah, maybe Kelly White. Will he help? Will he come? Should we all go to Greece? <laughs> I think we should all go to Greece. Kelly okay. White, yeah. the people's yeah, we'll champion. Know. TKM party in Greece. Let's do it. We'll tell. We're always yeah. going to address your comments, guys. But again, uh, that was Gus and that was Chad. And, you know, you're talking about humor. You're talking about inspiration, motivation. Why not talk about all of those things in one right now? Because it is the holiday season. So Giselle and Kelly, I'm going to put you all backstage here. And Howard as well. We're going to talk about something that is very inspirational because – Blurring of the Lions. It's amazing. It's great storytelling. We get to see the talents of these amazing people that leave me in awe in terms of what they do. The Kelly Whites, the Giselles. Sometimes there's videos and I watch them again. I'm like, Dude, they're amazing. But what's more amazing is getting to know the human being, which is what we're doing tonight. Why not get to know a human being or beings, plural, that have a story to tell, that have been doing something behind the scenes quietly with a lot, lot, a lot of, with not a lot of fanfare, I brought this to her attention. I think we should talk about this. This was my idea. We know she's humble and she doesn't want to bring this up, but it's it's important that we do because hopefully she can change your mind during this holiday season. Hopefully she could change your mind for the better. Hopefully we could put our ego aside and remind ourselves that the pride and the prize exists here in this tournament, but not out there in the road or in those streets. Not when we're drinking because we're not just putting our lives in danger other people's lives in dangers it takes one second remember something even if you're sober is the other person sober are you distracted are you sober but distracted because if you are you're just as likely you're just as likely to uh experience a wreck and those wrecks cannot be salvaged the pain cannot be salvaged when it comes to human loss she knows all about this. I want to bring in Mindy Red. Mindy, how are you? I'm good. How are you tonight, Avi? I'm doing well, my friend. I'm doing well. And I brought this up because uh, it is that time of the season. And I think people should know Changing Minds will be live as well. Yes. And, of course, uh, speaking of Changing Minds, you've changed my mind. I've said this ad nauseum since 2020, but you were one of the reasons why I became a better driver. Because I was a distracted driver until I heard your story and your mission. And I love how you educate people without uh, judging. It's, it's really tough when you lose someone in a certain fashion to not judge others when you see them doing wrong. Because, of course, there's trauma, there's grief, there's pain, there's all those things. Yes. But uh, you have a really great way of not being judgmental when you're speaking with people. Mindy. You know, I've worked really hard over the years to let go of my anger. And it took me time to understand that if I really want to change people's minds, if I really want to save lives, I have to understand that it's about education. Just like Jerry was saying earlier, it's about education. It's about helping people understand that we have to make different choices. And so sometimes we have to get on their level to help them understand to make those different choices. Because, you know, when it comes to impaired driving, people aren't waking up that morning saying, I'm going to kill someone today. They're not doing that, but it's happening. It's everyday people like me, like you, that we're going out and we end up making a bad choice because, you know, we've had a few drinks and we think we're okay. We get up, we're walking, you yeah. know, we think we're fine. And then the next thing you know, you're not fine. 
because your inebriated mind, you see things differently. The lines in the road look differently. The car coming at sure. you looks differently. And so then the next thing you know, you've taken a life. And it's everyday people like us. I meet them every day that didn't intend to take a life, cannot believe that they've taken a life, but now they have. And they're sitting in prison and they're, you know, they've they've taken a life. They've, you know, they've ruined their family's life. They've ruined their life, you know, and they're living with that guilt every day of taking a life. You know, like the woman that killed Michelle, when I asked her, you know, what is the worst thing that came out of this? Was it you know, prison time? Was it being away from her own children? What was it? And her response to me was, I killed your baby. I killed your kid. That was the worst thing for her is living every day knowing she could have prevented this, but her choices led to the, to a life being taken that night. That's a, that's a story that really hits me because I've heard it, but there's always a, a reaction that I get. And I'm glad like the moment I don't get a reaction is a moment where I would blame myself for not reacting to that because we talked about human experiences and human connection. How can you not connect to someone who's championed a mission that means the world? You know, um, it doesn't mean you're just one thing. You know, I talked about how we're all climbing that mountain. Right. You know, people that want to throw stones. Of course, some of those people throw stones haven't cleaned up their side of the street yet. And it's pretty messy. But mm -hmm. um, it's interesting how we are, like a lot of celebrities, we too as people are put in a box. Yeah. You're the distracted driver. Therefore, you shouldn't do silly storytelling. You're the storyteller. You shouldn't have a mission that's very humane. But I like that. I like that. I like that people could see you as far as our new viewers as as who you are. Uh, and to me, that's the Mindy Red I remember, the one who championed something that means a lot, the one who made me a better driver. And you're not just talking about your life experiences. You're also helping people know that remembering a name is what it's all about because it starts how do you we talked about the human connections it starts with names it starts with names when we used to do a show a while back if you remember mm -hmm. one of my questions was or, or i would actually tell someone who was grieving and talking about their lost loved one whether it's a child you know that i would ask what's their what was their name or what is their name because it's not past tense what's their name i would always use it in present tense what's their name mm -hmm. what are their hobbies what are they like doing so now, through this tragedy of losing someone due to distracted, impaired, or drunk driving, I would take back getting to know them if they would live and be here. But I now know more about the human being. And much like Jerry Lucas talked about how education needs to be visual, I need to know who the human being is. I want to know about their story because, yes, it's sad news when I when I turn on the old boob tube and television and see a, a car wreck and I see bodies that are distorted or perhaps not even shown to us by the media. Yeah, that's going to affect me. But when I see the faces of the people who were living lives, who had passion, who had pursuits, that's the stuff. And you every year give a name to these people. So does John. And I want to, bring this up here guys it's a quick video because i always say a picture is worth a thousand words but a video is definitely worth a million mindy mm -hmm. will let us know what this video is what it signifies right after we watch it
So that is the tree of angels. And there are 10 Christmas trees in my front yard. All those trees have been donated by people in our community. And what those trees signify is people that have been, well, nine of them are people that have been killed by an impaired, distracted, or drunk driver from all over the country, some even across the globe. And we have one tree that represents victims that have survived these crashes. And it started five years ago with one little bitty tree. It was a sad little tree with Michelle, which was the one I pulled down and one other person and through the community of mothers against drunk driving and other grieving groups and Facebook, it has grown into, I do believe we're close to 900 on those trees. And I have about 100 more as of tonight that I need to make and put on the trees. And it is, Wow. Knowing their stories. I've every person sends me these pictures. I learn their names. I learn their crash dates, their death dates. They tell me their stories. I mean, some of them they're giggling in the picture. And I'm like, tell me what's going on here. Tell me what's happening. But the thing about these about impaired driving is it knows no discrimination. I have ultrasounds on those trees. There are twins in an ultrasound on those trees. There's baby Maverick who didn't even get to make it to this earth. His parents survived the crash. I have three sets of twins on those trees where one twin survived, one was killed. I have one young man on the tree, Randy, who was hit twice by a drunk driver, twice. And the second time killed him. The first time he was asleep in his bed and a drunk driver came through their house and caused him to be special needs until they were in a crash where a drunk driver killed, ultimately killed him. This baby was hit twice in his young life. I remember one of the episodes we had, it was heavy. I mean, we, we talk about things and if you remember, I wanted to do this. I was like, let's, we need to get these stories out there. And you were the one who brought in some pretty amazing people and what they had gone through and they would tell their story. And the one thing I learned was terminology. You know how in our workshops that I teach, which guys is a show on the network as well, but I always say I don't like the word acting. Yeah. I like storytelling. And I'm not going to get into that, but there is terminology that speaks to me. There's terminology that doesn't. I learned a long time ago that from you, the word accident need not apply because I want to bring this up. Uh, a great human being here with a great comment because he cares a lot, and he lost his brother. I'm going to read this. Dakota says, my brother was only 17 years old, and he had such a bright future. Please listen to what she's saying and stay safe. And then above that, uh, Dakota brought up, I'm trying to find this comment, Mr. Benson. Let me bring this up sorry, right here. I lost a brother to a car accident. So I learned that the word accident need not apply here, right, Mindy? Correct. So I always tell people because... One of the things I do is I go inside prisons and I educate about impaired, distracted, and drunken driving. Because what we have to do is put a human being to these crashes. And so one of the things I always tell the men and the women is, tell me in your own words, what is an accident? What is an accident? And part of the word accident is you're rationalizing the behavior, you're rationalizing it down. So you're taking away the responsibility. Oh, I didn't mean to do it or it wasn't my fault. But when you call it a crash, a crash means it was preventable. There was a choice that was made that caused someone to lose their life or be disfigured or, you know, injured for the rest of their life. And so it is very important when we say it's a crash or it's a wreck and it's not an accident because an accident is something we couldn't prevent. You know, it's, there were different things that you couldn't prevent with an accident, a blind spot or something like that. But a crash was preventable. A wreck was preventable. Uh, well, this is a great comment here. I'm sorry for your loss, Dakota. And Chad, That's the Dakota correct. says, thank you for everyone. He lives through me. I love that. Uh, yes, thank he does. you for he telling us about him. him. What was his name, Dakota? Or what is his name, Dakota? Uh, this is from Chad. This is why T-Can stands up above us. Uh, we try to talk about things that matter. And we're not going to ever educate you and beat you over the head topics because hopefully you'll understand that by now these are conversations meant to be had. And as I asked Dakota to let me know 
what his brother's name is. is. I'm going to bring John Red into the conversation, Mindy, and ask him a question I already know the answer to, but I want everyone to know the answer to this. John Red, what is your daughter's name, my friend? My daughter's name is Michelle. Through you and Mindy, I got to know her. Would, would you be kind enough to let the masses know a bit about Michelle? Uh, you know, Michelle was, she was one of those, those kids that, uh, you know, she was going to do her own thing, you know, we, and uh, she was very, very, she was bullheaded. You know, she, she gets that from the red side of the family, you know, um, and uh, she had to learn on her own. She had to make her own mistakes and everything. Um, she kept me on my toes. She probably gave me some gray in my beard, you know. <laughs> um, she had a very beautiful singing voice. I used to always say if we could have just got her to American Idol, she could have gave uh, them a run for their money. She sure. used to uh, sing the national anthem a cappello and whew, she uh she would uh, bring tears you know many champions she champions this cause and she really is the lifeblood behind everything that that happens you know she's she keeps michelle alive and what i always say is that if we can prevent one person from going through what we went through then all the work and all the hard hard work and the dedication that we put through this is all worth it you know all we're trying to do is prevent somebody from joining this club that nobody wants to be a part of. And isn't it true that we're all affected by this sometimes without even knowing, meaning a neighbor, friend, a cousin, look at, I hate to just boil down to statistics, but these, uh, these murders are happening every day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, a couple of uh, years ago, we, we spoke at uh, some schools and, you know, when we, we had groups of, 10 15 sometimes 25 people and we'd say raise your hand if you've been affected by some either someone you love or someone you know that has been affected by a drunk or distracted driving and not once did we not have three or four hands go up in those crowds wow and we they were sending us every 30 minutes we would get another group um you know and and so some people are affected at a bigger loss you know some people are dare i say lucky that maybe they didn't lose the person they just they've got affected and got a, a good scare you know i can say that we were always against drunk and distracted driving but when it hits you home when it hits you dead in your face you you you, you are a part of that club and you want to make sure that you do your part you know i've i've done things as far as calling in when i see people uh, uh, you know that are were swerving and things like that i've stayed there till the cops got there and you know i do stuff like this that's incredible and my daughter's that's honor incredible. you know and it's it's not always it's not always the cool thing to do you know it's not always the hip thing to do you know a lot of people might see you as the drag you know sometimes we don't get invited to parties and things like that which is okay but you know we have nothing against drinking and having a good time you're All saving potentially is. someone you're saving someone potentially who could become either your friend or somebody else's friend or somebody else's father or somebody else's mother or somebody Absolutely. else's teacher or you're saving people with so much potential you're saving people that are living and when i say that you're saving them you're saving them because for the most part the logical mind says this guy's right i mean that's my question to you have there been people 
we all know that people don't want to be told what to do and what to drink and what to drink. But have there been people who said, you know what, it's through your story or through your advice that I haven't been distracted when I've been driving. Like, you know, again, with me, 2020, I was a distracted driver. I'll be the first to admit it. <laughs> I was distracted. I was on that phone. I was in water bottle and protein. I'm doing all these different things, treating my car as if it's a living room. But uh, it's through Mindy's testimonial that I decided that, no, this is I'm, I'm doing something wrong. Because most people aren't privy, they're not. They don't expect that. They're, they're conditioned. They're conditioned to something that they think won't affect them until it does. It's like, for instance, if you walk barefoot on a hardwood floor, you don't think the nails can ever puncture your skin until it does. You know, if you're attending a basketball game, you'll never think that a franchise like the New York Knicks, as decrepit as they are, can affect your heart the way that they do. But they do. I bring this up because levity is a very big important part of what uh, what we do as well. But there is no joke when it comes to human connection. And I think if I serve as an example of a person who admits, hey, you got to drive better, Avi, because that Mindy Red told one hell of a story and it hit me. I broke a habit. Have you had people telling you they've broke habits after hearing you speak to? I, you know, that's something we talk about often because, you know, it's easy to get discouraged, but when you, when you see these things that happen and these, the, the, and you hear stories and you even in our, we have a very small town and you hear people that, and you, and you like, is it, can we even make a difference? But it is very reassuring when people come up to you and they tell you that, Hey, based on what I know, what you've told me, you know, not only am I going to, not going to, I'm going to be that. Un, that unfavorable person that that grabs people's keys and makes sure that people don't drink and drive. I, I've had people tell me, you know, I used to not, I used to not drink and drive when I had my kids with me because you know I want to put my kids at danger. But they had told me that, and I told them, well, what about everyone else's kids? And you know, they, they, you see that light bulb go off in their eyes. You know, it's like, wow. You know, you, you, you're thinking about keeping yourself safe and your kids safe, but there's other kids on the road as well. And, you know, it, almost every time Mindy speaks, she has someone come up to her and tell her that she's she's changed their mind, that they'll never drink again. And that's that's why we call her. The, you know, you coin the, the shows changing minds because that's that's what she does every day. Every day. Uh, I'm blessed to have known Michelle through your storytelling and. Mindy storytelling and we're going to know more about Michelle guys and gals, but let's just remind ourselves that the reds are taking people's stories, experiences, grievances, and losses to heart. They're doing, I'm talking, they're doing, they're out there. You saw those trees. It takes a lot of time and a lot of effort, Absolutely. especially when, you know, those trees are what, how tall are those trees on average? Oh, they're uh, the biggest ones about 10 foot. You know, 10, 10 feet the, tall. I mean, and you yeah. know, on top, on top of that, you got little, little Mindy Red, who, according to Julie, yeah. might be an ornament or something. I mean, she get lost inside that tree uh, yeah. quicker than a hiccup. So, I mean, you guys are doing a lot there. You're having all these trees being erected with, with amazing, amazing uh, mementos and pictures and photos. And that last photo was of Michelle, guys. Uh, it's incredible because you're telling people's life stories through this tradition. Uh, you don't have to do that. You do it because you'd like to do that. Uh, yeah, she's only four foot eight. She gets shorter every week. So Kelly's right. Yeah, uh, the, the, the cool thing is like, we've been doing it for so long where our neighbors, you know, they've been there pretty much about f since we've done it. And they always will, you know, like if a tree blows over, they'll, they'll take care of it for us, you know, because we tie them down, but it's Texas weather. It can, it can get crazy sometimes, you know, and today we had people out looking at the trees and going through the trees. And they were actually, Mindy was getting ready to go to the gym and they were actually out there explaining what they were and telling them, Hey, this is, this is what they do. They do this every year and explain. And so that was really cool to, you know, we, we've never asked them. Cause to like do they'll it. stop, right. They'll like actually stop and go, Hey, like there's people could tell there's a story here. They're kind of curious about this. Yeah. It also yeah. received some, uh, some uh, attention regarding the local news. It is, it's an eye grabber because I mean, I heard the cars in the background and it's funny. All, all the person needs to do is stop and ask you a question, and you guys are right there. I love it. I love it because at, during this particular time of year, anything, anything that can help someone through the day, the holiday season, we all know suicide rates increase. 
anything to give people hope. That's I'll champion that right there with you guys. Uh, John Red and Mindy Red, guys and gals, Changing Minds will air live. So our next episode of that will be Mindy Red and I discussing more about uh, her mission and more about Michelle. And John, of course, hopefully works things out with Mindy. I mean, based on that video last night, it looked like Lauren left you high and dry. Am I right about that? You were kind of there in the junkyard yeah, alone. Having to handle my own business, you know. Jeez, but please. Uh, guys, it out. he will on Wednesday nights, guys, because remember, we're going to get to the bottom of this whole situation. Uh, we knew, we do know that Ben James, he's a knocking on that door. He wants a piece of Mindy Red. You already said you're going to make the ultimate sacrifice. But, guys, at the end of the day, Wednesday night is where you will find out who and what and where and when will take place in the life of the Mindy Red and the John Red and all the Reds and Ben James. How will this thing end? I don't know. We know how it began. Blurring of the Lines comes back in January. Uh, guys, Saturday night here. This is the green room. There was a banner that I want to allude to. John, watching this in real time, as I bring in Julian in about a couple of minutes, I want to talk to John about the match itself. Right, This just in, bodybuilding legend and the Incredible Hulk himself, Lou Ferrigno, Emmy nominee and star of Perfect Strangers, Bronson Pinchot, and one of the best of all time, Jerry Lucas, all advanced to round number two. Your thoughts watching this match. I mean, look at the look at the talent right there. Look at that trio, John. That's It's like... Uh... It's like Howard was saying. Well, no, as Kelly was saying, you're asking who you wanted to, who you wouldn't want to face, and it's like, man, it's pick your poison. You know, I mean, Mr. Lucas has a telegraphic memory, so I mean, you know, there's nothing that that he can't memorize or do. The Incredible Hulk. The Incredible Hulk. I'm I'm sitting there like starstruck, <laughs> obviously, because you know, growing up, that was my hero. You know, we had all the toys. Yeah. I mean, it was. That that was I'm like am I really sitting here watching the Hulk? You know what I mean, and, and for I mean, me it was bodybuilding because like it was something that meant a lot to me years ago. And Lou Ferrigno, everyone that doc watched Lou Ferrigno in Pumping Iron will know about his story and his dad who pushed him so hard. Yeah. But I mean, this guy won bodybuilding. Uh, we're talking about the most prestigious awards possible at age 21, 22. Started out very very thin, uh, couldn't hear at all. Yeah. Wasn't diagnosed till three. Overcame so many obstacles, and then yeah. Bronson Pinchot who I wish people knew beyond his roles. He will play very antagonistic characters. He will also play very charming characters. But the man is, he's a philosopher. He's a really smart guy, but he's down to earth too. Uh, he and David Hyde Pierce had a great friendship. They still do. Went to school, school together, shot a student film that they're both very proud of. Um, to this day, he says that's actually one of the greatest projects he's done. So he's a very down to earth guy. They're all around three. How fitting, John. But at the end of the day, once we split them up, I don't think uh, I think anyone wants to face either of those three rounds. No, it's going to be like I said, pick your poison. You know, I remember um, the uh, he was on Beverly Hills Cop. Uh, he had a yes. small role, but I mean, he did it so well. I mean, he did it so well that it landed him the role of Balky on Perfect Strangers because he was playing essentially the foreign man. Okay, uh, a version of the foreign man which Andy Kaufman uh, made famous in the 80s and late 70s, of course. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, yeah. And then uh, it was he was off to the races. Of course, Risky Business, he had a good role there. That mm -hmm. preceded uh, Beverly Hills Cop even. Uh, man, oh, man. And even did a great Tom Holland film called The Langoliers. It's a horror film. Uh, Bronson Pinchot's role there, I think, was uh, he had scene stealer after scene stealer. Yeah. Guys, speaking of scene stealers, uh, don't go anywhere because in this outro, you'll find out maybe some hints, maybe some clues as to who's coming in next Saturday night. Round one continues. I told you December was going to be big. It's getting bigger. Man, oh, man, is it getting bigger. But John Red, guys and gals, doesn't get bigger than it does in Texas. This man over here, guys and gals, has a big heart. This man over here, guys and gals, has a big chance of moving on beyond round number two. John Red, I want to bring you back for the outro momentarily, my good friend. Yes, sir. Mr. Red, guys and gals, class personified. Uh, let's bring in Truly Julie because we're talking about hard work and dedication. That's what you need to win this tournament. But what happens when your hard work and dedication – is unseen by the masses. What happens when, when people don't see the hard work that you do? Well, it's truly Julie. Uh, Julie, come over here and get your roses so I can embarrass the hell out of you here. Uh, listen, you Buffalo buffoons don't get a lot of roses thrown at you. All right, you get a lot of a lot of other stuff thrown at They're you. They're very beer, seasonal there. Beer and, beer and tomatoes during the, the days of the bard. There were a lot of tomatoes being thrown on stage. Yeah. Well, you guys are used to that. Again, I call you Buffalo buffoons because you continue to root for this sorry, horrible, <laughs> decrepit, untalented, unwarranted team that you call a football team, the Buffalo Bills, 
You do so incessantly, hoping and wishing upon a star that they will finally get it right and start winning. You think that they will. Take it from a Nick fan. They won't. Hey, it's like, you know, loving the worst child that you have, but you don't want to admit it to anybody. <laughs> the worst child. Loving the worst child. Well, guys and gals, you know what, uh, what we do love? We love the work, uh, we, Julian. We love the work. We do, actually. Bunch of bums. Really Julie Hall's do. calling the Buffalo Bills a bunch right. of bums. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, they're bums. I'm not going to disagree with you, actually, today. I'm not going to fight with Love you on losers. that. Um, let's find something else to fight about. Kind of like but... the Knicks. That's what I said. Jeff, I said, look, Jeff, you're a Buffalo Bills fan, too, right? I told Julie the same thing. I said, look, take it from a Knicks fan. Get out. Get out while yeah. the getting's, well, it's not really good if you're a Buffalo fan, but it's it, it could be yeah. worse. Get out while the getting could get worse. There you I go. Know. A little, little southern lingo. Uh, guys, listen. Julie and yours yeah. truly are busting our booties behind the scenes. We're working. That's what it means. We're working hard. Uh, there is sweat. There is passion. There is time being put into this network. For those that don't see it, may not want to see it. For those that don't see it, <laughs> it's because they want those neon lights. They want those neon lights that say, Victory, winner, award. Can't get there unless you work hard. It goes hand in hand. It cannot get there. You cannot hire a team to promote your vision. You cannot hire a team to take your creativity and work on it daily because no one's going to love it as much as you. And Julie, no one loves it as much as us. Man, isn't that the truth? I mean, seriously, um, nobody else can inject the passion that you have that i have that everybody else has that's behind the scenes here uh thank you john i appreciate that very much i yeah, totally appreciate that you know <clears throat> i referred to children before but it is like it's your baby and i'm helping you raise the baby <laughs> and uh, you know nobody else is gonna know those those um those little things about the baby that that we're gonna know. You know, you could say, "Oh, you have a good a nanny," but is the nanny baby, gonna know? Yeah, exactly. But... Babysit my kid. They take milk at this time, and you know, some cookies, crackers, whatever. Burp them once in a while, but they're not gonna know every single little idiosyncrasy about that baby. And that's kind of like what it is here on the green room and TKN, and what we're building behind the scenes. You know, all those little things that we really nurture and massage. What are you doing? Opening up an orange? I haven't. No, hold on. Hold on a second. I can't eat this yet because there are a lot of layers, right? There is a lot of layers. But hold on a second. If I'm hungry and I like oranges, am I going to keep peeling? I'm going to continue peeling, right? Because I like it. I've got to do the work. Like how hungry are you? Hold on. It depends on your hunger level. Julie, right? if I want to eat this orange, I've got to do some work, right? I've got to peel it, correct? You do. So I'm going to keep peeling this orange because that's what it takes to be able to devour it and enjoy it. We cannot enjoy what we're doing unless we work. We can, I know how that sounds. We cannot enjoy what we're doing unless we peel back those layers. And it's through this mission and this project that we've gotten to know each other, all of us. It's through this mission and this project that we've gotten to realize that people can be virtual. They could be from different states. They could be from different countries. But if they want to do good and they find like-minded people that want to do good as well, there might be in luck if they could find like-minded people that want to do good that are willing to work just as hard. I'm here to tell you that that's what makes you rare. There are not many truly Julies out there no. that when it comes to put up or shut up, she's right there, guys. She's working her butt off. And it'd be, it'd be great for me to be able to go back to this episode on December 9th, 2023 and play it someday. And show you how far we've come, you know, because the beauty thing, the beautiful thing about this is that we're not chasing something that we can see just yet because we love staying in the present. We love putting our head in bed on a pillow, knowing that we've done the best work we possibly can. That's rewarding. That's the real pride in the prize, right? Knowing that you accomplished and packed as much into a day as possible. You're a mom. You've got a beautiful daughter. She loves you. You've got a mom. She loves you. You've got a family to love you. And then you have a second fam here that loves you too. And when you're still able to do what you do every day and make no excuses about wanting to be the very best, that's 
the person that I wish I could show off. Not the person I would want to show off because of anything superficial. The person I want to show off because of her heart, her desire, her no BS approach to life. You are one of a kind. And you wow us and leave us in awe every day. All of us. Thank you. I I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, each day I get up and just put my nose to the grindstone. Some days I don't even get out of my pajamas, truth be told, because I, like, I get up. I know certain things have to be done and not only have to be done, but I want them to be done. I want them to be done correctly. And that is uh, just the passion and the love that I uh, insert into it. And, Jeff, uh, I can attest her hard work, sun up to sun down. She's going hard. <laughs> That's right, Jeff. The layers, my friend, the layers. Yes. You can't get to the yes, orange unless you true. peel back the layers, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> sometimes some people wish that there was a shortcut. I don't because you don't learn anything. It's true. Right? You don't you allow don't. your mistakes to guide you uh -uh. because you can't make them if you're playing safe all the time. Uh, this is not a nine to five. This is not a Fortune 500 company where you clock it and clock out. Uh, this is something that we believe can hopefully change Dare I say the world? Mark Henry said it. I said it. All of us believe that. We believe it because the world may need to know that divisiveness doesn't necessarily equal metrics. Division doesn't exactly equal ratings. It's what we have, so we think that's the way to go. So for every TikToker, for every person who wants to sensationalize or criticize, watch this show and see how it's done. There's pomp and circumstance with intros and outros and rhymes. And there's living room conversations where we challenge each other through thought-provoking topics. And then we learn more about each other after this segment. And we have conversations like this where you get to know who Julie really is. And Mindy and John and Kelly and Giselle and Howard. And that's what TKN is. It's not rocket mm -hmm. science. It's not. But, Julie. Yes. Truly, Julie. will epitomize everything I just said. Because that's going to go live too. And when it does... We're going to learn about a lot of things. We're going to cut it up and have a great time because at the end of the day, knowing that this machine is as massive as it is, having a great sense of humor certainly helps, Julie. Oh, my goodness. You need it, right? Otherwise, you're <laughs> what the alternative sometimes. You go like a little crazy and, <laughs> and cry and stuff. And But, yeah, no, I got to have my humor. You got to have your humor. We need to cut it up because some of the days we've seen and maybe one day we'll have a story about that. <laughs> about everything we <laughs> that we've seen behind the scenes and the things that we've gone through. We always talked about that. I think, uh, guys, as I put Julie backstage, she's going to come up here with Mindy and Giselle and Kelly as we bid you adieu momentarily with John Red as well with the outro. Uh, yeah. but Julie works hard. She does. I want to bring in Howard. Haven't we talked about this, Howard? Haven't we talked about what if we could have documented the behind the scenes of this thing? I was literally going to write down, we, we need a documentary crew. I mean, uh, yeah. we always talk about that. Like, hey, man, if we had that recorded or this recorded, oh my right? God. If we chronicle this or chronicle that, it's it's been incredible, right? And and, and so sometimes we can't appreciate what happens in real time because it's happening real fast. But it's yeah. like those little. Uh, my advice is to anyone: it's like those little opportunities where you do have a chance to sit back and yeah. take it all all in, do it. And I'm not trying to be funny here, but I mean, even if you're sitting on on the in, on the toilet, even if you're by toilet, I don't mean Nick's. I mean the actual toilet. If you're sitting yeah, on the actually. toilet. Right, if whatever it is in the shower, in the train for those who obviously ride the train, yeah. take take two minutes, take five minutes to just close your eyes and go, damn, oh my gosh, this is moving, this is going, but it's not just going, it's it has been moving and going and morphing and changing and evolving, and it's just beautiful to see, man. And it's beautiful to talk about it. Like we haven't done a show where we've actually done this. Yeah. With yeah. Kelly, Giselle, Mindy, John, Julie, yourself, me. Like, this is the second half of the green room. But, guys, starting next week, the second half of the green room is going to give you an exclusive look at some amazing clips of our talk shows. Mm. We've been talking about how each one of these celebrities have their own show. Well, yeah. we'll lift the curtain up. You can see some great moments. Uh, but, guys, at the end of the day, you know, this gentleman here, Howard Collado, does care. He cares. Maybe. Just maybe he wasn't ever allowed to believe that he can care as much as he does because when you wear a certain hat and put on those big boy pants, there's expectations. And Lou Ferrigno talked about it. You're going to compete with yourself. Yeah. You can get that hand. 
You can get that pat on the back. You can get that compliment, and it could do nothing to you at all if you don't feel good about who you are. But, but, challenge yourself. Yeah. When it comes to looking at something that you've done and you've put together, be proud of it, yeah. but don't settle because it could be better. And I guarantee you, from a man who had to take a screenplay that I told you about yesterday, yeah. from someone who hired me, a celebrity, if you will, didn't mean anything wrong by it. But I wrote this gentleman 109 pages. And he hired me to write three different drafts. With no limitations based on how many drafts that I write for him. When he read those 109 pages and go, can you start over? Guess what? With a smile on my face, I said, no problem. You know why? He challenged me to be better. No way around it. Only one way through. And guys, there's only one way through the top of this tournament, so let me bring everybody in here. <sighs> Howard Collado here, guys, is sitting with me. Been here since day one. Love you, brother. Has a ton of passion. Has a ton of heart. Works very long hours. Let's bring in Mindy Red, Giselle, Kelly White. Can't be said enough for Howard, guys. He is a workhorse. Uh, but again, at the end of the day, we are here to win this thing, guys and gals. Am I right about that? Everyone wants to win. Yeah. Uh, at this point, before we play the outro, guys, which is a very awesome video package, which will inspire you if you have blood running through those veins of yours, I'll ask you this quickly, and you'll explain in one sentence or less. One sentence or less. After about one year, is it about the pride or the prize? John Red. Man, it's about the pride. That's the pride, the pride and the prize. Is it? It had to be one. Is it about the pride of the prize? It's a hard one. I know. <laughs> I'd have to say, for me, it'd be about the pride. The Why? pride of being called Mr. TKN. You're going to hold that, and you'll be the first one forever. Ooh. You'll be the first one forever. Time stamp that, guys and gals. Let's yeah. let's have John Red. You're gonna be seeing John Red soundbite all over across the week, and we're announcing it here. Mm -hmm. Giselle, pride of the prize. It is definitely about the pride, because that means that we are finally showing off who we are and what we stand for. Very true. Very true. Julie. Pride of the prize. This is a no brainer for me. It's about the pride all the way because <clears throat> leading up to the pride is the passion, the desire, the motivation, the tenacity and the motivation and everything that is ingredients into going into that pride. The prize will come in many forms down the road, whether it's money, whether it's uh, feeling self-worth, whether it's uh, pushing other people up and allowing them to be their best person. So definitely it's the pride. Mindy Red. It is definitely all about the pride. I mean, look at the talent pool we have. Mm. When you win it all, you beat the best. Mm. It is all about the pride to be able to say, I beat all these people to get here because it's going to be a tough battle for whoever wins this whole thing. Great segue. Whoever's going to win this whole thing. Naturally, I have to kick it over to Mr. Kelly White. Wow. You know, Avi, it's uh, <laughs> always has been the pride because unfortunately riches are fleeting. You know, fortunes are you know come and go, but sure. You know, the pride that's to accomplish that is a story in and of itself. And stories really do run the world. And you know who runs this world, guys and gals and pals? The cast of the green room. You're looking at them right here. This is the measuring stick, guys and gals and pals, when it comes to human beings. 
Uh, Howard Collado always likes to make a dramatic exit. So, Howard, I'll ask you the same question as you log back in. About the pride of the prize, Howard Collado. Which one? I can't take $13,000 with me to the grave. But pride to me leads to a legacy. And a legacy is something you that stays here after you're gone. And as I get older in life, all I want to do is be able to be of service to others. And I think this platform, I mean, we saw it with Mindy today. I mean, she was doing it before this platform, but this platform. Mindy and John Red. Yeah, Mindy and John Red and all the amazing things they've been doing. Um, to me, that's what that represents. This this TKN, this opportunity, it broadens our, our microphone, our proverbial voice. And there's so many things that I think a lot of us here hold dear in our hearts. So for me, it's pride. Pride is forever. Great answer, Howard. Guys and gals, Howard Collado, Julie, John, Giselle, Mindy, and Kelly White may not interact with you right now because they're going to enjoy this outro. You guys can comment and let us know your thoughts. Maybe they could take this in because we try to change it up every week towards the tail end of the video. You might get a hint or two about next week's participants because we are we are winding down round one. And it's going to get more challenging. And yes, through these texts and emails, sometimes I show them too. Beyond the sound bites, beyond the glory, the real story is what happens behind the scenes when these celebrities want to know who's next. <laughs> When is their next match? Mm. And who and why do you want to win this thing? Anybody can. Somebody will. Mm -hmm. Enjoy. Be talent every time. You got all the talent in the world, but are you obsessed? Is it all you ever think about? Is it all you ever think about? If you put your effort and concentration into playing to your potential to be the best that you can be. Is it all you ever think about? I don't care what the scoreboard says at the end of the game. In my book, we're going to be winners. Let's face it, it's you against you out there. Let's go! Let me hear it! walk on that court, you have to think I am the best guy out there. Fucking slam! Lying down! Right. I don't care if LeBron's playing. I'm the only candidate that spent his entire career literally working in the private sector. Even while I was mayor, I was required to hold a full-time job in the private sector. My two opponents, they've been cashing government checks for well over 20 years. Okay, speak uh, back. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Terminator is out there. Can't be bargained with. We got chaos throughout the world, and nobody's given anybody any respect. It can't be reasoned with. Across the entire planet, we need the return of Gort. It doesn't feel pity. Now you're going to bring your garbage and war. A remorse. Out into space. Well, we're not going to let that happen. Or fear. And it absolutely will not stop. Well, of course I am. I don't do nothing to lose. Plant fear and fear will grow. Because if you have a man looking at you and he has a little fear in his heart, where does that put him? But in the palm of your hand. Because already you have created doubt in his own mind that he has the strength to continue against someone like myself. And you don't know if there's going to be a tomorrow. Stan, about a bunch of guys who have to prove themselves by beating each other's brains out. It's just that cruel moment of when you realize... Why did you become a reporter? There is no hope. My father was a reporter. I was a good writer. It seemed like the right thing for me to do. That tears at me. And you want to be the best reporter you can be for him and yourself, right? But it doesn't tear at me anymore. Yes, that's right. Well, I'm just trying to be the best I can be. Not just for me, for Tanaka and my Shidoshi too. Because there was a... I don't play. I don't play. I just win.
I think that when you have kids that are that, that are in fragile situations as it is, it, there's another human being, a species which I happen to belong to. If there is some type of mentorship program that is is safe and sound and productive for them, lift himself. The rest of us sat as human beings up to a better place to be, if only for a minute. I, I do think that it's it's absolutely essential to try and. Uh, Let me tell you, kid, it was pretty goddamn glorious. Eight to six minutes. That's what happens in that six minutes. To round number two. Deflected ball picked up by Ray Berry alone to the basket. A tremendous move away from the ball when Berry's man jumped off. Well, that was the Warriors up by. They should goes to Berry who again swings under his. They fixed 86 games between 1947 and 1950. When you take that field today, you've got to lay that heart on the line, man. 600 million people, they say, watched the landing on the moon. If you do that, and the first steps. We cannot lose. Same thing. You don't play for individual awards. You play for team championships. You play about winning. But he stays in the block. This guy named Jack Ruby comes out of nowhere and shoots him. And then it was just total chaos. We may be behind on the scoreboard at the end of the game, but if you play like that, we cannot be defeated. You know, people grab Ruby, got, they got the gun. They hustled him out of the room. How you play today, from this moment on, is how you will be remembered. <laughs> And Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier in 1947. Nothing is over! Nothing! Drexler outside, Maloney, Johnson at the buzzer! Yeah! Eddie Johnson hits at the buzzer to give the Rockets a 95-92 win. It's how well you can talk your way to a job. To you just don't turn it off! And when you rhyme, ooh, there's lots of bull. When it comes time to step to a mic, I don't sit around. Play, you know I don't kid around. So come with it, boy. Don't even hide your best. Cause kids fell back was described your best. Look around, watch the people clap hands. Maybe even those people that you lost. It don't matter if this guy opens my head again. If you hear them in your head, they would say the same thing. All I want to do is go to distance. They would sacrifice for you. Do it now or I will kill you. You believe it? One. This is God's two. house. Don't make me do this. Please. Don't. Three. Has all the advantages and none of the advantages of kryptonite. The line must be drawn here. This far, no farther. To round number two. Here, you went here to win the whole thing. There is no tomorrow. So definitely. There is no tomorrow. To round number two. The money. Conquer your fear. Absolutely, I'm going for it all the way. And I promise you, you'll conquer death. To round number two. Oh yeah, for sure, yo, yo. We don't, we don't go out on, with no losing mentality. And that, my friends, is called integrity. We champions at all, yo. That's called courage. We, we put this work in. Now that's the stuff leaders should be made of. When you're in gratitude. for your life and for your blessings. I believe love Don't go away, you is the greatest power we have to create with. If you want something, Don't go away, you love it more. The only two people I want to beat right now is Rick Barry <laughs> and Eddie Johnson. Now, baby, I'm coming for you! Now, baby, I'm coming for you! Somewhere around a 285-pound mark. I'm going to take it like I won the first ever Royal Rumble. Oh, yeah! That's right! He pulled the top rope down. Stay out of my way! Have board, will travel! Oh! Oh! We listen to a podcast, gentlemen. We are seeking one of two things. We're seeking information, you will not give, I'll take. For wanting to be entertained. And he is my enemy. You know, things inside you matured and tears come to your eyes. Oh God, no, please. 
there's, there's something, there's a religious aspect to it. Ah! I, I believe that it's one of the reasons is because it's an all volunteer army. They may not choose to be in Iraq and Afghanistan, but they chose to be in the army. That time, that hero, though, goes to the eyes of Buff Bagwell. With a room. Stamp your paycheck and do your same nine to for job security or you can go after much bigger things and you got a chance for to have passion in your life to have passion in your life to have passion in your life and I didn't think he would even remember me when uh, my visit was over But I looked at his mom and she had tears streaming down her cheeks because someone cared enough to come in and try to make his day a little nicer. Territorial and global expansion. I like these odds. <laughs> that was the real reason. And in addition to that, there was also a lot of assets that we got out of Vietnam. That only now in the last 30 years is being discovered. Uh, how about the word drugs? No, we're planning on, plan on winning tonight. To see the girl, and in the instinct that happened, there's about 10 girls that came and grabbed the girl and said, come with us. But there's some beauty to that unknowingness. Once more into the breach, dear friends! Once more! And I think that that's what's beautiful about the, the story of our lives. I'll close the wall up with our English dead! It's truly what you say he is. He'll become that. He will become that. Do you get that? Yes, Avi, I do get it, okay? I was going to ask Howard what happens when the lines are smudged, erased. Do they turn into squiggles? Do they turn into ripples? Do they turn into loops? If I go back and you rewrite me, I can do better. I don't feel that my voice is being heard.